seven six. Are we on the point in Minneapolis? Content. 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 Listener discretion is advised. Adam Corolla and Dr. Drew. Loveline, coast to coast. Hey, it's Loveline, everybody. Was that on the air, right? Really? Oh, sure it was. Why, but how come you can't hear yourself during that part, Anderson? I can't hear myself during that part, Because your headphones are always off your head. Oh, all right. So when do we go on the air? What point? Like like how many seconds before 10? Yeah. Right at 10? No, it's like at 10.20, but usually it's right when I point at you unless Drew turns his mic on and starts to talk. Oh, yeah. So I was waiting for, yeah, he hadn't pointed yet. I know. Speaking of the point, is that's our uh, Minneapolis <laughs> affiliate, right, Drew? <laughs> right. That's All what right. I'm saying. <laughs> that's what I think. Phone number for Loveline, 1-800-LOVE-191, fax number 310-854-4455. Dr. Drew is the dumbest board-certified physician an addiction medicine specialist you ever want to meet. Tonight our guest is from Big Brother. Brittany is in here. Drew is uh, smitten with Big Brother. I've not caught on to Big Brother, but uh, Drew certainly has, and part of that's because he's being paid to do it. But the other part is is he's genuine, genuinely interested in the human condition and, and, and dynamics and uh, how people interact together. Yes, something Whereas, you wouldn't know anything about. No. I know. Oh, was I vomiting this morning. <laughs> I was heaving so hard this morning. Well, the nice transition. Through. That's very nice. Look at my eyelids. Look look at my eyes. Yeah, they're purple. No, do you see these splotches? Yeah. These bus from, that's from, from retching. heaving. That's from retching. <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh, my God. There was nothing in me just heaving this morning. It was horrible. Why? Why? You drank horrible. too much. No, not too much. No. Now, here's what happened. I played, then we're, we're going to get to uh, Brittany and Big Brother. I played in that uh, softball game oh, yeah, yeah, last yeah. night in uh, Lancaster. Uh, one for two. I hit the ball kind of hard to right field. Nothing spectacular. But I made the best catch I've ever made. Oh, good for you. And anyone's ever made. In the world. In the world. Okay. In center field. Uh. I'm talking dead run, skyrocket, hit out there, a million miles high on my horse and diving. I mean, wow. I hyperextended my left shoulder. And I'm not talking about a good catch for a lame chick or a drunken guy who's in a band. I'm talking about a- Willie, Willie Mays. Willie Mays. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if anyone if anyone saw that game, feel free to call in and uh, tell me all about and it. And what does that have to do with the retching? Well, I hurt my shoulder. You, you took opiates. I, pain I, I, well, don't call them opiates. They're pills. <laughs> I, I took a Vicodin when I got home because I hyperextended my left shoulder. I mean, I laid out flat in the air and skidded on my face for 10 feet in the middle of center got it, field. Got it. it was one of those hold the ball yeah. up because no one thought I had it yeah, kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I threw my back out taking a bow. <laughs> <laughs> I really did. I bowed. The place went nuts. Oh, so I got home that night. I took a Vicodin, had a couple glasses of wine. Oh, my I, God. Well, I, hey, I was in pain. But I missed dinner because I didn't eat dinner. I didn't eat anything. And then you started retching. And, no, felt fine. Woke up the next morning, got up early, you know, 8.30, 8.45 in the morning. Got up, had a headache, took three aspirin. Oh, my God. Had an empty stomach, and I was, like, dehydrated. Yeah. And I had a half, half a cup of coffee and started heaving. Okay. It was great. And then heaved for, like, <laughs> the next hour. And then I like, had, like, a eye drop full of tap water and heaved. <laughs> That is everything. I heaved up air. I heaved up everything that went into my mouth. I swallowed some dust. I actually, I, I swallowed a little plaque about 9.30 in the morning. That's and I nice. heaved that That's up, too. Nice. So a lot of heaving. That's uh, what happened to my eyelids. <sighs> All right, let's talk to uh, Brittany now. Brittany, when did they throw you out of the house? Oh, gosh, it's been three weeks ago now. And, oh, three, you're from four. Minnesota, right? <laughs> yes, You can get from Minnesota. That accident. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and and uh, I got to get all the rules down because I've I've just been I have a very rudimentary uh, awareness of the show. I don't exactly they, know. They how go into a room. They nominate two people. How each many of them. people start in the house? Ten. And what are we down to now? Four. And what is it? Five hundred grand for the winner? Yeah. Then a hundred for number two and fifty for number three. And when are we going to know? When Friday. does it get down? Friday. Oh, get down to one. They end it on. On Wednesday, it'll be down to three, and then the public will pick the number one, two, and three spots. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. And why, why were you tossed out in your estimation? 
Why did they say they tossed you out? No, 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 no. The House nominates, then yeah. the public votes by far. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, that's worse. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, what happened was <laughs> the week that I was up, there were six of us, I think, that were up for nomination because we all voted each other and we all got two votes. Mm-hmm. That week? Yeah. Everybody was up in the House except for Jamie. Huh. So there were six of us that were up. And then the public votes, and there's this huge whether or not I got banished fairly. Uh, there's another guy in the house, George, and his wife, I guess, made this big banish Britney movement because uh, I turned out to be the most popular on the AOL poll. Yeah. So she saw me as the biggest competition. And um, I guess she has a friend that works at the phone company or some company picked up the tab. And she had these phones put at a bar and had people um, be able to vote for free because it cost a dollar, cost 99 cents to vote. Uh-huh. <laughs> So, and then there's this huge... Now, what do they do with that revenue? They, they, they take it. I'm sure. Oh, they do? Yeah. Now, what do you think you th- they do with it? They go buy Well, no, cars. What, what I'm saying is at first I thought, well, all right, that's a smart way to get people not to vote multiple, multiple times. Right. I mean, you don't have your kid brother take uh, a week off school. Allegedly, it, it's fairly costly to, to run these kinds of polls. So you, they're sort of breaking even. Yeah, they're not making much money. Okay. Out. I just didn't know if it was right for, what network is it called? Fox to CBS. I mean CBS to take this you know sort of profit off of yeah. something. Yeah. I mean if enough people vote, how many people vote? A couple hundred thousand, I think total. Really? Yeah. Not bad. Each time. So. All right. So the, the exact numbers aren't given out, but. Right. All right. So so there's a little controversy in mm-hmm. that uh, she may have uh, stuffed but, the but ballot But I think bottom. you had it right though, because Brittany, when she came out, said, "Cause I think the way people vote is just yeah. so interesting, because you don't vote because you like somebody." You vote because you dislike them. Because they and and it's not dislike even. It's sort of like anybody that stands out gets voted. Yeah. I mean, why did Cassandra get voted out? Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? And and yeah, pe- I don't know why they let her go. She was my favorite. <laughs> you don't even know who she is. Uh, yeah, yes I do. Cassandra. <laughs> you do not. She's Elvira. Cassandra Peterson. Uh, that's right. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right. Is that uh, what we're talking about? Yeah. I love her Halloween special. But so you, you know what I mean? There, there's, yeah. There, there's it's a very strange phenomenon, and it, it's all. And I, you said that when you came out yeah. that, that you were very very popular, but you you believe that since you were popular, probably yeah. people also you stood out. Well, too, I think that the the people that are online voting Different. on the polls Different. and where I came up most popular, I think a lot of them are younger Absolutely. people, and, and it's, it's their parents that don't really think the girl with pink hair and the nose ring should be someone that they look up to. So. How, how did you get into this? Well, I answered an ad in the paper. Mm-hmm. Went down there, filled an application. They had you in front of a camera for two minutes, and you said why you thought you were interesting, and then um, just left. And then about a month later, I got a phone call. And it was actually kind of funny because I, I forgot I did it. It was so much later that I didn't, you know, and for my works, I do pharmaceutical sales and we do things with I care about, I, I don't tell him Adam, Adam will be looking you got for any sandwich? Oh. Here we go, here we go. Oh, dear. You got anything in your trunk? I don't work for them anymore. No. She did, she did, uh, she did have, uh, carry a, a great medicine for urinary incontinence, though. And I oh, know, really? Yeah, as you've aged, oh, it's been yeah. an issue. So. Speaking of urinary incontinence, <laughs> I, I, I took a squirt in an Evian <laughs> bottle yesterday. Oh, dear. Why? 24 hours ago, so help me God. Why? Because I was in Lancaster for this uh, baseball, this softball yeah. game that I hyperextended my shoulder. Yeah. I'm suing. There's a lawsuit. I can't really mm. talk about yeah. it. But I was in Lancaster. Yeah. And uh, they don't tell you how far. You don't know how far Lancaster is. That's a good hour away, hour 15. Isn't it? Good hour and change. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of these things where you're passing Magic Mountain yeah. and you look up in the sign and it says uh, 30 miles. Lancaster, yeah. 46 miles. Yeah. You know, and you go, holy Christ, yeah. that son of a bitch who sold me on the game said that's about the same distance as, uh, you know, <clears throat> Magic Mountain. But anyway, I was driving home last night. Yeah, okay, I had a beer, you know, in the dugout. I was driving home and I thought as I got into my car, I thought, I got to pee. I don't have to pee, but wait a minute, I'm thinking about pee. So that must mean something. You know that thought where it's like, I don't really have to pee, but yet pee is now running through my head and something is going on with pee, but I don't have to pee. But yet I'm going to be on the road for an hour and 15 minutes. Maybe I should take a leak. On the other hand, I don't really know where I am. Screw it. I'll be lucky to get back on the freeway as it is. So that's when the Avion came in. Well, as I was driving through uh, like Pacoima or Sun Valley, that's when it really kicked in. But I thought I'll I'll be goddamned if I'm going to pull over in this (laughs) hellhole. 
And uh, for those of you who don't uh, who live in that neighborhood, you know firsthand what a dump it is. And I grew up in that area, or at least in North Hollywood in that area. No way am I pulling over to take a leak. Plus, with all the screwed up foreigners who own gas stations now, you can, what, what are your chances of taking a leak? You end up just leaking behind the place in the uh, tub that they check the inner tubes in anyway, right? I mean, what are the chances some guy's going to let you use his bathroom no. in California? In Southern, Southern California. California, the a-holes that own gas stations. And all of you should kill yourselves immediately, please. These steely-eyed foreigners who sit there behind that uh, four-inch glass and tell you they're out of everything and throw your change at it. What are the chances you're going to use your bathroom? Forget it. So I kept driving, and it was getting bad, and it was getting real bad. And when I got off the on-ramp from my house, I didn't bother going up the hill. I kept driving to the church parking lot, whipped out the Evian bottle, and uh, cleaned myself out right there. Church by him. Yeah, there's a church. It's right off the uh, oh, okay. off ramp. Oh, yes, nice. <laughs> I, I took. Uh, so what, solitude was, what, there. what was Brittany talking about? I have no idea. <laughs> Brittany was talking she, about she, voting. <laughs> no, she put it. She put an ad. No, she answered an ad. Oh, that's oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So then I just kept being called back for interview after interview, and then once they tell us that we make it, we get about a week to to figure out what we're gonna do. So I had a week to quit my job, and I own a duplex, so I had to prepay all my bills for my tenants and stuff. Mm. So it's pretty hectic, and then I got in the house. You own a duplex? Yes. That's pretty. Yes. Well, wait a minute. Duplex only two places. Yeah. Right? You live in one of them? Yep. Ah, that's nothing. Then. So it's all right. Still. Du- duplex <laughs> in uh, Minneapolis. Yeah, in Minneapolis. What'd that run you like? Eighteen grand? <laughs> little more. <laughs> <laughs> Not much. A little more though. All right. No, I'd kill myself. If I found out how much it was. Are you ready to go to the phones? Sure. Yep. That? And what are you doing now? I mean, what are you, you just going back to Minneapolis? Or you no, I'm moving s- out to L.A. Do some so. acting? and. Um, I actually, yep, I signed with Willie Morris. So. Oh, those a-holes. Good luck. <laughs> oh, they're so nice. Have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> have fun. <laughs> you have fun with the other 8,000 people they employ. Oh, yeah, that they won't even remember you. <laughs> don't don't bother Asshole. talking to them. Asshole. Believe me. Asshole. Mike? Yeah? You're 15. Mike, the, Adam, that's such... Now listen, I, I'm telling you, it, it's it's forget it. You got to go make your own stuff. They're not going to get you any jobs. Do what I did. Do reverse psychology on them. Tell them not to call you and not to bother you. <laughs> then they'll get nervous and start calling you and wanting to go to lunch. You see what I'm saying? Okay. All right. I'm telling <laughs> you, it'll work. Chips watching out for him. Mike, you yeah. understand? For her? Oh really? Oh yeah. Forget it. Now it's really over. Go ahead, Mike. All right. Um, I have to be kind of quiet because my parents are in the other room. But uh, my my girlfriend's pregnant. She wants to keep the baby. Mm-mm. How old is she? Uh, she's sixteen. Hmm. Yeah. Nice. So your kid, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, what do you want her to do? Uh, I want her to have an abortion. W- what do you want from us tonight? She's uh, made up her mind. Want to know, like, if I can do anything about it? No. You can help raise the baby. You can. You're going to have to. You're, you're going to have a. You, financially, you're going to be required to. to help support that baby what if she gives it up for adoption uh well she doesn't want to do that either why uh she goes she wants to keep the baby herself and she doesn't think that it's yeah how's her family situation uh her dad she doesn't know where her dad is mom got married got had a baby when she was 16 uh she had her when she was 17 oh well oh, she just, just well she's pregnant at 16 yeah so your girlfriend will have her baby at 17 also right it's right on schedule perfect Yes, it's that big crap go round that keeps keeps spinning in the sky. All right, Mike. Well, you just hopped on the crap go round. All right, hey, enjoy. But don't be part of the at least insofar as this merry ground goes. Don't be a part of I don't know where dad is syndrome. Yeah, yeah. She mm-hmm. should know your daughter or son should know you're in Florida and remarried. Okay. Okay. You understand? All right. That's your responsibility. Hey, you know, I, I'm I'm now lowering the bar for all dads. Uh, forget about supporting your child. Forget about being a part of your child's life. Forget about raising your child. At least have them know you're what part of the country you're in. That's all I want now. You know, so instead of like, I don't know where my dad is, he moved to Atlanta and uh, he owns a bait and tackle place. At least you know that. At least that you know. But if Mike that's really right. wants something to do, he can try to prevail upon his girlfriend to do what's right for that child, which is to get a family which is prepared to raise a child, an adopted family. Right? Right. Right? Right. 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 All right. Christy. Yes. You're 16. Yeah. Um, well, when I was three, I was molested. And um, I'm really attracted to older men, like older men. This was an older guy that molested you when you were three? Yes. How old? Hold on. Hey, Drew, I think you're rubbing up against my uh, can. 
jack this thing, there. This thing. Yeah, is that what you're doing? Yeah. It's fading in and out. Oh. Do I have the energy to go off on Westwood One and what a flaming turd this dump is? <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead, Christy. So, how old are the older guys you're into? Um, they can be between maybe, probably up to like 35. Uh huh. Has, and, and how he, low can you, I mean? Uh, what's the cutoff point? 20. Um. Well, yeah, I'm not really attracted to anyone my age. You're 16. Yeah. Yeah. Have you been with these guys? No. Okay. What do you think it is about them that you find attractive that you don't find um, in someone your own age? I don't know. Just maybe because they're more mature. Um, I don't know why. But it, you know. How old was the guy that abused you when you were three? Um, I don't know. I don't know who he was. But it was an adult. Yes. Usually it sort of sets people on a trajectory. It's like it wires them in a certain way that it, it's almost like they have to recreate that same trauma over and over and over again. And once they hit puberty, pow, it becomes a w finding those kinds of guys and older and yeah. what, think about think about the thirty year old guy that would go out with Christy, who that would be. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, totally Mr. Idiot. Wonderful, yeah. Sir Walter Raleigh. Hey, let me uh, make this uh, uh, assertion. I I never really thought about this too much, but women seem more uh, susceptible to this. Yeah, you know because they have faulty wiring. Whereas men, you know, they're wired like jags, whereas men are wired like Fords. You know, we got a little more, a little more uh, casing on our wires, a little thicker gauge. Do you know what I'm saying, Drew? A little I'm better listening. wiring. I'm, I'm listening. But here's why I think I've just figured, I'm trying to figure out why it is that women, when they get monkeyed with, go a little go a little wackier than when men get monkeyed with. And I realize it's probably the same thing that makes them mothers or, be, or more nurturing parents. They're more sensitive. They're yeah. softer. They're more open. They're they're more affected by yeah. They don't, their their skin isn't as thick, and so when they get screwed with, it really screws with them. Hmm. Whereas with guys. It's like kicking an armadillo or something. Yeah, but w you know what, what would happen? What would happen to the the five year old male that was sexually abused oh, by he, male? He, oh, by male? Well, uh, this isn't by male though. This is by female. It's no, not the same thing. But it's by, what do you mean? She had a male do it. Right. Oh, okay. So it's not analogous to say a male did it. What have you ever heard of a of a female sexually abusing a five year old male? What if doesn't you, happen? I know, but it just doesn't I, it's happen. Like, yeah, but it's like saying it's like saying. Um, a bear dry humped Christy, and uh, what if a, what if a bear dry humped a, a younger bear? It's a, it's the same. It's a different thing. Okay, I know you're squinting, but I'm saying a guy going at a young guy is different. Why? Because the one males is the homosexual only... and the other's heterosexual. But the males are the abusers. They're the ones that do the abusing. Women don't. I know, do but you're often. trying to draw an analogy, and you have to, well, just or, think, or a comparison, it, and you it, have it, to. You're 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 doing apples and oranges now. I see what you're saying. So let's say let's say it had been. Let's say, let's say Christy was eight <laughs> eight years old and a fifteen year old female got at her. What do you think the impact of that would have been? Uh, much less. And different, huh? And different, right. but but right, I'll give you but that. but still impactful. Yes, and right. still less impactful for a guy. I agree. But, okay, sorry, Christy. Well, I've I've always been like a real sexual person. Yeah, but that's because of this experience. Well, why would that make me? I mean, wouldn't that make me like the opposite? It does one or the other. It it, it establishes, will eventually. Well, it can, or you can go back and forth, but it establishes what's called a trajectory. It's like you'll start moving rapidly in one direction or the other, and that direction you've gone is more towards sex, as we have really recreating that original trauma. Okay. Okay. It's right. not a good thing. All right. So get some therapy. And I've tried that. It doesn't. It All right. Well, if that doesn't, doesn't work, work, then uh, start no. drinking. Well, do you feel good about yourself when you act sexually, or do you regret no, it? Actually, um, when I do do it afterwards, I feel horrible. Yeah. It, 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 this is how people become sexual compulsives. Okay. This is the story of sexual compulsivity, sexual yeah. abuse in childhood. This is what starts in teenage years, and it continues to fuel the shame, fuel the lack of self-esteem. It feels good in the moment. It also sort of feels whole, like you're you're in control of those awful feelings associated with that trauma. And then you come out of it even feeling worse. And then having to do it all again in order to try to recreate and feel good and control those feelings. Drew, you you did that whole thing in real time. Do you realize that? You well, know what I mean? Like the relationship. I, that was, I, I took six years to do it. <laughs> yeah, it just yeah, felt it was, like it was it. real time. Yeah. Chris. Chris. Yeah. You're 15. Yeah. Um. Uh. Adam, I like to say. You are the a genius. Yes, thank you. And uh, thank Drew, mm. not enough people compliment you. Hmm. Uh, not enough people co call in and compliment Drew. Thank you, Chris. Because <laughs> you hold the show together. God bless you. Without Chris. you, it'd be yeah. Adam. That's we are just a horrifying prospect. Yeah. He is the uh, pace to my decoupage. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, Thank you. Um, I want to know. Uh, you know what decoupage means in French, Chris? No, I uh, don't. It means uh, uh, gay. Okay. All right. Uh. <laughs> okay. Um, I want to know. Can you have a dry orgasm? Uh, yeah. But How? usually you can. Well, it's usually from from a retrograde ejaculation. The semen goes back into the bladder instead of forward out. And how's it do that? You mean you put pressure on the you, or sometimes sometimes or just happens, and sometimes medication be the most common reason for that. Do you then get a bladder infection? No, no. If that happens, no, mm -hmm. it doesn't hurt anything. Hmm. It's not a healthy thing, but not a bad thing. Did well, that ever happen to you, Chris? No, no. Adams Adams been working on that for years. Yeah. You know they're working on those smokeless cigarettes for a while. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah, trying. Yeah. You're. Tr this is to save the hamper. Uh, Semenless penis. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because that's the secondhand jizz that kills. Yeah. Well, you know I what I'm saying? Know. Oh my <laughs> God. Pets. The maid suffers. What's, What's that, that, Chris? Why don't you guys let me talk? Uh. Yeah. All right. I'll okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got to be the only guy in the world that does a show that's like sort of aimed for teen teens, but I hate teenagers. I really hate them. I you really do have not. no tolerance for them. You have no tolerance. No, I really don't. I, I hate them. No, I really you don't. don't. No, you don't. I hate the snot nosed ones. Okay. That's the ones I hate. I uh, I hate the ones that drag their uh, scrawny ass when they're crossing the street and they eat in a crosswalk and then they look at you and then they look back down at their feet and they're still walking like extra slow. You know, people that cross the street. So were you that kind of teenager? <laughs> no. <laughs> For some reason, I think you were. Hell oh, no. hell yes. <laughs> hell of course you no. were. How dare you? How dare both so of you? So are you really saying you hate yourself? <laughs> I hustled my ass across <laughs> the street. I was seen and Right. I'm sure you I did. I ran. Everyone ran across the street. When I grew up, if you crossed the street, you, like, did it a full sprint. Everyone ran across the street. Nobody walked across That's the street. your perception of what you did. No, I ran. I always remember that. It was like you, you ran because you thought you were going to get run over. You yeah. probably only ran after you stole something from the store. Whatever. <laughs> you were trying to get well, away. You know, whatever she knows you I well. It's amazing. How dare both of oh, you. Oh, man. I hustled because I was a teen. I was mm. a youth, you see. And when I see these scrawny, pissed-off kids dragging their scrawny asses across the street now, and they slow down when you see it coming, not me. I see a kid slow down, I speed up when I'm behind the wheel. I'll take his belt right off. I have no problem with that. I'm perfectly confident, by the way, that I could pass a kid's ass going 45 and be within two or three inches of his ass and feel very safe about it. Mila. Yes. Hi, uh, hi Dr. Drew. Hi, uh, everybody. Uh, I wanted to ask a question to Brittany. Yes. Um, I wanted to know if, um, if uh, you're still angry at Jamie and at uh, George's wife for what they've done. I, I wouldn't use the word anger, actually, for either one of them. I... It's more bitter, isn't it? <laughs> no, not bitter. For George's wife, I, you know, she has her own issues. And <laughs> she heard George. Which one's it's, George? Is he the cute one? Yeah, the old guy. The old yeah. guy. The old guy's my age. Yeah, he's kind of chubby. Yeah, but he, he acts cute. like he's 55. Really? Yeah. And, hmm. Wait a minute. Didn't, <laughs> <I> he, did, <laughs> what? didn't he get thrown off recently? Yeah, he just, yeah, he just got banned. And he was like in a toga or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, he's cute. I like him. Yeah, he's a nice guy. I think especially after this this last round, apparently she did the same thing that she did with me but targeted Jamie this time. And I, and I think that shows her reasoning for targeting me the time before was because I turned out to be the most popular on the AOL poll and she wanted to get rid of competition. Uh -huh. Jamie was not the next most popular, but she was the only other girl. And in talking to other people that, that know her, I, I think um, her wanting the girls off speaks volumes about her own insecurities. And you can't really be angry with someone. I just, you know, I guess I kind of more what feel bad. What about Jamie? Jamie, and I was never angry with Jamie. I don't think she has a bad heart. I don't think she's a bad person. I just think that uh, she's not as open as she, she could be. And I definitely do. What, what made you believe that? What was that segment where she was trying to make amends with people about selecting the uh, agent? You, you know what? It wasn't exactly that. It was more when I got out of the house and I think about all the people that I spent time with, I really don't know anything about her. I lived with her for two months and 
I don't know her opinions on anything. I don't know. Don't you think she did that on purpose? Though? I'm she's oh, sh- wait, hang on a second. Nobody well, watches she's so show. conscious of the camera. Come on. You know what? I did initially, but after speaking with her family and friends, they they say that she is like that. That that's it's just close. that's how she is. And so I think maybe maybe it's more so since she's on TV. I mean, she talks about storylines all the time, and she did in the house. I mean, she's definitely conscious. She wants to make it in Hollywood. Mm. She doesn't want to make waves. And uh, I, I think it's sad because there's probably things things about her or her life that if she would have shared could affect people watching. And I think that she's really missed an opportunity to help people, which, which is sad. And in the process, she's damaged her own image. <laughs> so I, I don't know. It's, it's not really anger. I just... Don't trust her as much as you thought you could. Yeah, yeah, hey, I, uh, I don't. Mila. Yes. Yeah, does that answer your question? Uh, it does answer my question, Adam. Uh, good. <laughs> I'm sorry, Adam. is so Thank impolite, you. Mila. <laughs> no, it's fine. No, I don't know. It's only for us three who listen to or watch the Big Brother. On right, I understand. Do you have any questions about no. like a Mexican soap or something <laughs> we can wax on for about 20 minutes on? Maybe not. He's an idiot. All right. <laughs> well, is Big Brother going to go uh, next season? Are they going to go somewhere? Are they going to do another season? They're are they going to yeah. they be somewhere? Same place. That that house cost them a fortune to set up. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, technologically, it's just. <laughs> but everything breaks in it. The chairs break. The silverware break. I don't know well, how no, it no, costs no, so much money. It's not the silverware, though. So all they that didn't stuff. have any money left for the yeah. furniture. <laughs> all right. We are going to take ourselves a little break. Brittany is here from Big Brother. Uh, Dr. Drew is also joining us from Big Brother. And we'll be back after this. Come on. Back in a minute. It's a fact. One in every 10 used cars has a major problem. By major, I mean caught fire, burned to a crisp, rebuilt, put up for sale. Happens every day. Make sure you're not the poor slob that buys this piece of crud. Get a vehicle history report from Carfax.com. Their purpose? To give consumers the real history on any used car. Visit CARFAX.com or ask your dealer for a Carfax report. Next time we will discuss Flood damage. Hey, Frank, give me a price check on these magic tinkler condoms. Romeo up here wants two big boxes. Hey, don't be embarrassed shopping for condoms at the corner drugstore. At condomstore.com, you can buy top quality recognized brands online. Shop condomstore.com anytime, day or night, and have condoms shipped right to your door in discreet packaging. Visit condomstore.com and get our special 75 condom collection. It's a great way to try out a variety of top brands for only $9.95 condomstore.com Hi, I'm Serenity and these are my friends, Missy and Stephanie. You know, a lot of things happen to us every day that we have no control over. But HIV and other sexually transmitted diseases aren't things that just happen to you. You do have a choice. You can choose to use a condom, have safe sex, and take control of your life. Asking for a condom isn't stupid. It's smart. It shows that you care about yourself and your partner. You can do something about sexually transmitted diseases. Use a condom. Every partner. Every time. We, we do. do. A message brought to you by Wicked Pictures and AIDS Project Los Angeles. Oh, come on, have a drink. No, thanks. Just one little drink. I don't want to. Chicken, everyone else is. I said no. What a nerd. One little drink won't kill you. You've heard it all before. Be cool, join the crowd, have a drink even though you're not 21. Let's go, she's no fun. Make the right choice, don't give in. Underage drinking is dumb and dangerous. Look out! A public service message from the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Somewhere in our community is a mother whose drug abuse once left her unable to care for her kids. There's a father, too, whose alcohol use drove his wife and children away. There's a boyfriend whose drug use frightened his girlfriend into giving him an ultimatum, get help or I'm gone. Help is available. It's in the form of treatment programs for drug abuse and alcohol problems. And the good news is that these programs are making a big difference in people's lives. With proper treatment, mothers and fathers, sweethearts and coworkers, friends and neighbors are overcoming drug and alcohol problems and reclaiming their lives. Isn't it great that treatment works? To find out about drug and alcohol treatment programs that can help, call 1-800-662-HELP. 
That's 1-800-662-HELP. There is help, and it works. A public service of this station and the Center for Substance Abuse Treatment. Dad, I don't think our campfire's totally out. Are you kidding me? I know when a campfire's out. Did you drown the fire with water and stir it with a stick? No, it's out. We don't have to... Who said that? Frank, it's a talking moose with sunglasses. And a bunch of singing and dancing forest animals. We know we can count on you to do what Smokey says. And when your folks desire to build a fire. Hot, hot. Clear brush and branches away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And keep water nearby like you ought to. Okay, I poured water on the fire. I stirred it with a stick. Everybody walked slowly toward the RV. Dad... These are just Smokey's friends. Only you can prevent forest fires. Frank, it's Smokey. Nice hat, Smokey. You want the rest of my peanut butter sandwich? Dad! Visit Smokey at www.smokeybear.com. Brought to you by the USDA Forest Service, the National Association of State Foresters, and the Ad Council. Hey, it's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. It's Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. What? Is that it? No. LOVE-191? Yeah. Where's your commitment? I don't know where it is. You slacker. I'm tired. I was vomiting all morning. My shoulder's hyperextended. I, I feel like hell. Brittany from uh, from Big Brothers, our guest tonight. And uh, this show is going to have its big climax uh, coming up this Friday, right? Yeah. And you going to be there for that? Oh, yeah. The show yeah. is... Who, who, who thinks going to win? I uh, want Eddie to win. So, but who knows? The public's voting, and mm. who? Hey, the, 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 <laughs> I don't did he understand. talk about his cancer at all? Yeah, he did. We, I mean, he, Eddie and I have talked about it. I don't. He Cause, mentioned cause it to the house. His medical but situation really frightens me because here, here's my thinking: yeah. he had osteosarcoma when he was 11, had an amputation. Mm-hmm. If, if that they give, usually give chemo, and then it's either cured or it isn't. Yeah. It wasn't. And if it it's isn't, terrible. I saw some uh, pictures of him having ha- where his hair was missing, like he'd had chemo recently. And that yeah. is that is bad yeah. news if that's in fact what's happening here. And he'd never he hasn't talked had about it recently. And then they've talked about medical bills, and it's like, well, wait a minute, if he had medical bills from back then, why does he still have them now? Unless he's still getting treatment. And if he's still getting, getting treatments, that's awful. Well, from what I understand, that uh, the medical bills only paid for 70%. His insurance only paid yeah, for but 70%. But, so. but in hospitals only let you go out over two years for mm. in terms of payment plans. So what has accumulated over the last, what's well, he been what doing if you the last nine years? What if you years? don't pay He says he hasn't been doing plans. anything. They're still, then they, then they're they, from Then back. it's the bad debt. Well, I think they had to take a couple mortgages or something out on the house, and that's what he's calling his I medical see. So he's not, still, he's not still getting. No, he's not still getting. As far as I know, he's not because there was anything. there was one of those old tapes that they had of him in a, in a one of those trial tapes. He looked like he'd lost hair, like he had hair loss. What like trial tapes? Well, they're like these. Yeah, he promoted. hasn't had chemo since he was eleven right, or something. Okay, all right, so. that's important. What's a trial yeah. tape? The, the, I don't know how to describe the, the promote the tape the tryout tapes. Oh, tryout. Oh, oh you said trial. I know. Tape. I, I know. I thought you meant like he was giving a deposition no, or no, something. No, no, no. All right. Well, that's no fun. Hey, uh, well, how's it? What's the show? It's in the top ten, right? Yep. The, the live shows. It's been in the top ten uh, ever ever since it hit the air. The right? live shows. Yeah, well, good. Yeah, <laughs> good. <laughs> Just like the Man Show. Wait, oh, well, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. Man oh, Show doesn't quite make the top how ten. How dare does it? you? Oh, wait a how minute. How dare you? How dare you, sir? Aaron, Have you ever seen the Man Show? No. No. I'm sorry. You, know, you know what I'm talking about? No, I have no uh, idea. <laughs> sorry. Oh, Best show on television, the Man no. Show. Oh, well, the who's man that? Show. Who's that? The governor of your great state? That was Jesse Ventura <laughs> talking about the man what show. What did he say about oh, the man show? Oh, dear. What does he say? <laughs> Anderson, what was that? I didn't quite catch it. A- hey, Anderson. Play it again. Stop talking to everybody. Best show on television, the man no. show. Yeah. The governor's seal of approval. Okay. Who was that? I don't know. What, I what? Said I'm giving the governor's approval to the man show. Yes. <laughs> He's a genius, that Jesse Ventura. Aaron. Okay. Uh, good evening, Brittany. Hi. Uh, first off, I'd like to say... Uh, Drew, you're literally a genius. Appreciate what you do for the people. Ugh. They really don't get enough credit. Thank uh, you. Enough. Oh, really? He gets too much. I'm smarter than he is. Well, yeah, Adam, and, but we all know that you are literally a millionaire. Well, that's true. There, there that's is a true. reason why you get to that. Stuff. Yeah. That's true. And Thank like, God for Dr. Drew. <laughs> you didn't not want it. Dr. Adam. I don't see a doctor in front of your name, Mr. Big Mouth. 
Well, now, <laughs> uh, before I get to my question, I wanted to make a couple of requests if there's any opportunity. Yeah. If there was any chance to maybe hear the Drew Shuffle, if that's still around. Mm. At some point tonight. Yeah, no, not yet. Yeah, not. No, 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 the, no yeah. you mean the boogie. He means the boogie, I think. You want to hear the boogie or the I, shuffle? I think it was the shuffle. The, Ow! That one. Yeah, I think it was the shuffle. But uh, I would be happy with either, probably. <laughs> All right, we'll play the boogie later. I don't, don't, uh, don't forget that, Anderson. And if there was any chance that might might have a little revival of the word recoculus for the evening, that would. Yeah, whatever. Oh yeah, so I'll try to work recalculus into a sentence. Is this a weird energy night, or just just me? Well, listen, I threw up and uh, hyperextended <laughs> my shoulder, so I'm, I'm not feeling good. You're high Recoculus. in Vicodin. You're high in Vicodin, <clears throat> probably. Yeah. No, I was high in Vicodin last night. Yeah. Not tonight. I mean, later tonight, but not now. Aaron. Okay. Uh, what else? I'm good for uh, probably you know two or three ejaculations in one day. Mm-hmm. But then it's gonna take me probably a couple days to recuperate from that, you know, in order to. to create more semen and when i don't have the semen when i ejaculate it's kind of painful it's not the erection itself it's as painful just not having the semen is there any way any foods that can be eaten no no you mean you mean if you masturbate and there's nothing in there and you have just a dry run it's painful is that what you're yeah, saying just, yeah kind of why, why are you pushing yourself to those well it's not really masturbation it's sexual activity all right but listen you masturbate a couple of times, and then it takes you a couple of days to fill up again. Uh, no, see, if I'm good for for two or three, I'm thinking, you know, I used to go every day. If you go a couple times every day for a while, it really kind of is he you down talking in riddles or is it just I don't know what he's saying. Listen, I know what you're talking about. How it hurts more when there's nothing in there because I was vomiting up <laughs> air. <laughs> today uh-huh. and it was worse it no satisfaction <laughs> at all so you, you know what it's like you're yelling at the sink hey! 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 Like nothing nothing comes out you know it's like weird i'm hoping the neighbors were looking i was over the kitchen sink like yelling at it <laughs> like, so like oh, when something man. comes out of you at least it makes sense you oh, know oh my god oh. Aaron, no there's nothing you can do you can you can ease up and sort of uh just I was back so, in line with your body wrong, was intended to do. Something's wrong with you, Can't though. Can't you just space it out and do it once a day or something? No, but he, right. he, he says, here's Aaron's assertion, is he gets, he masturbates two or three times and then gets lucky the next day. Yeah. And that's his situation, which I'm sure doesn't happen. How often is that going to happen? That you're taken by surprise by sex, Aaron? No, I, I kind of seen a couple women, and you know, it's just kind of. All right, just, well, if you're just, seeing a couple women, stop jacking off every five minutes. There you go. That's All it. right? End of problem. And listen. You're talking, I mean, I'm a guy who's masturbated plenty, especially in, you know, I, I put together some good days, and <laughs> something will always come out, believe you me. Even if it's just your soul? One time <laughs> I, I turned inside out, but <laughs> no, it's, something comes out, believe me. And listen, you don't, hell, man, you could, you could whack off three, four, five times one night, sleep for six hours, and get one off in the morning, and something, something would come out equivalent to what came out the night before. Hmm. It, it, it's pretty fast. Hmm. Don't you say? You don't know anything about that, Drew. You don't. You don't check. I don't, you don't check, check for yourself refills. like no, that. No, I don't. <laughs> it's test my limits the way you guys do. Well, I'm. I'm telling you. Uh, that's good. No that's problems. Great. That's. Not, that's right. Yeah, I'm delighted. You hear that? I know my grandmother listens to the show. You hear that? Yeah. Uh huh. Oh Jesus! I I had lunch with my grandma. Uh uh-uh. You know now. You know my grandma always wants to talk to me about the show. Yeah. And she's 87 now, 88? Uh, no, I think she's Is she 80, disappointed 84. in you? <laughs> well, I'd say I'd say yes, but to be fair to her, she would have been disappointed no matter what I did. So it's oh. not exactly. It's not just the show that disappoints her. But uh, now every time we get together, you know, she wants to discuss, uh, you know, she'll and she'll she'll do this too and it man, I I started to think about it. I thought, you know, now I'm like trying to avoid her because she'll call me on the phone and go, uh, you know, how about we go to, I'll go, uh, how about we go to lunch uh, this week, uh, Grandma? She'll go, all right, uh, good, because I had a few things I needed to talk to you. I got oh. a bone or two to pick to you, with you about the show. And I think, mm. oh, Christ. It's like, I mean, I got to pay f- for this? You, well, you know it gives her something about? to do. Oh, yes, it does. Well, what does she talk about <clears throat> this time? Oh, we're uh, rape and uh, that kind of stuff. We had a big rape discussion. It was nice. You ever talk to your grandma about rape? No. I think um, I think rape is a good thing. Yeah. Is that what she was talking about? No, no. It's just just a nice rape discussion with grandma. You know. It's nice. It's always, a, always, a always, always friendly. <laughs> it's always great to be talking about rape with your grandma. Yeah.
Hey, if, if you really, Brittany, have you ever spoke to your grandmother about, right? No, I can't say that. Oh, That's say probably it. a topic I want to avoid. It's a treat. So. It's a treat. Oh, wait a minute. Let me think. Did I bring it up? No, no I think maybe she brought well, it well, up. Wait a minute. I put it in the context. It I the know. Other, the other There's more you, to the story yeah, than the, you're the, saying. That your grandma's brought up other things. Like oh, at, she, at the dinner table. Everything. Rim, so, rim jobs. Uh, your grandma uh, uses that word? Oh, yes. Autoerotic well, asphyxiation. Uh, set the scene, the rim job scene. She wanted to know if anyone heard of a rim job. Dinner table. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, and we were actually eating dinner at the dinner table. It wasn't We weren't just at the dinner table, you know, drinking with it out in the backyard. Had she or just something. heard the word or something? Uh, didn't know what it somebody meant? brought it up there, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But she was embarrassed that she didn't know what the term meant. Oh. Yeah. So I get a lot of that. Chad? Yeah. You're 22? Yep. What's up? Uh, first off, I'd like to say I'm voting for you for president. Thank you. <laughs> and then I got a. Couple questions for Brittany and then a bunch for you, okay? Uh, a bunch? You got one minute. Go. Go. <laughs> um, Brittany, I want to know if uh, those pictures of you on the internet are real. There's a picture of me in a green dress that's real, and there's a picture of me in a white sweatshirt that's real. The other ones, the naked ones, I'm assuming you're talking about, no, those are not real. I mean, they don't even look like me. I can't believe people ask me. I mean, the girl is a lot taller than me, heavier than me, has long hair, and I had short hair. I mean, it's they're not me. Oh, they're supposed so. to be like old pictures? Well, apparently they're pictures of me at Bernie Man, and then they have some of me. It's so funny. They have a whole bunch of pictures of me at Bernie Man, and I have short hair. There's two pictures. You can tell it's me, and I have short hair, and then they have a couple naked ones and this girl. That Burning Man like is where they go just uh, light that big wicker guy, and everyone gets yeah. naked and makes love. Yeah, not everyone gets around. naked. Some people do. Well, if you're Burning do. Man, you're up to no good. <laughs> where, I mean, it, please. What's, what's, what school is that? It's a what? temporary artistic Burning Man. community. What school? What was it? It's, it's, it's Hesher It's in the Black you. Rock Desert. Oh, my God. You yeah. never heard of this? I, I have heard of it. I thought it was a school and thing. To, and school. I'll, I'll put in there also the ones of Jamie are not real either. I talked to her friend, and the naked pictures of her aren't real either. So all the nude pictures of the Big Brother girls are fake. No. no that's too bad. So, Burning sorry. Burning Man is where a bunch of, bunch of communists and uh, long hairs and uh, bead-wearing types, yeah. you know, kids with uh, tattoos and the Oh, so you've never nose. gone? No. You don't know what you're talking they, about. They head out to the desert, and everyone just gets effed up out of, out no, of beyond no, belief. No, no, And everyone gets naked and runs around, and they wrestle with each other, and then they burn mm. this uh, big uh, effigy. Big effigy, yeah. yeah. Well, what's different? <laughs> what's different than how I described it? It's it's a temporary artistic community. A lot of it is about <laughs> art, and people get grants to go build art. Art, and are you, you don't go me? out there and get. Not everybody. Yeah. Yes, there are some people that go out there and drink and do drugs, but there's a lot of some. people that don't. There's a lot of people that don't a and lot. go out there to get away from life as you know it. It's, it's Listen, kind those, of, those people would go on a, on, on oh, other no, days, not no. on that day. You have no idea what you're talking about. What did you do there? <laughs> it was just a nice what getaway. Did you do you there? get away. I, I just ran around and talked to people and dressed up, wore costumes. It's kind of like Halloween. Uh, high as a kite? No, no, Come no, no, on. no. No. Please. Mm -mm. You were drunk every night at least. I was at not. Least. You don't want to get drunk every night. You You're don't in the desert. Get, You'll oh, dehydrate. You don't want to get drunk because it'll ruin your ex high. Oh, God. <laughs> Please. <laughs> how dare you? You have no idea what, you what you're talking about. What do you take me for? You were high on peyote and a it was X one night, peyote the next night, mushroom if the next night, really acid like the that, night after that. If it was really like that, you'd be going there. Everyone there is high as a kite. Oh. They're running around naked. Where is it? their parents Where by is artistic It's in Nevada. It's in the Black Rock Desert. No, you go. Yeah, please. In the meantime. It's it's, it's what it's tail hook for hashers. Okay. All right. Anyway, what's your other question? That's it. We're taking <laughs> a break. How dare you try to lie to my face? Okay. We'll be back after this. How was school today, Rebecca? We learned what the Earth was like a long time ago, way back in the 1990s. Oh. Grandpa, did you ever taste water? Oh, my, no. By the time I was a boy, water, if you could find it, was pretty much unfit to drink. But I hear tell, long ago, children used to make lemonade with actual tap water and drink it on hot, sunny days. Really? Yeah, and sometimes they'd fill balloons with water and toss them at each other and laugh or, <laughs> or run through the sprinkler singing and carrying on. And then after a day of playing, their folks would put them in a tub, fill it with water and bubbles and scrub them until they were squeaky clean. Wow. 
why didn't people try to save the water? Well, I guess they didn't think one person could make a difference. Thousands of Americans make a difference every day. For example, over 900 million tons of untreated sewage is no longer discharged into our nation's waters. A message from ECHO, the Earth Communications Office. He's the We're gonna try to get some more okay, stuff. class, this part of the museum is known as the Hall of Trees. A tree? What's a tree? Large plants that once covered much of the Earth. This is a full-scale model of a maple tree. Wow. What are those green things? Those were called leaves. They took in sunlight, nourished the tree, expelled oxygen, creating air for people to breathe. People didn't breathe out of air tanks? No, then the air was everywhere. The sky was blue, even the ocean was blue. The ocean was blue? And filled with fish. What's that? Fish. When you protect the Earth, you protect your health and that of your children. We're making progress. There has been a significant improvement. 20 years ago, air pollution in Los Angeles exceeded health standards on four out of every five days. But we still have a long way to go. Here's the Hall of Weather. Press that button and you'll hear a rainfall. Why do they need rain? Without rain, a flower couldn't grow. What's a flower? One person can make a difference. A message from Echo, the Earth Communications Office. Personally, I'm so sick of hearing about the environment. I know. What's everyone so worried about? 51 million Americans live in areas where the air is officially classified as unhealthy to breathe. It's a big world, and it's been here a long time. Yeah, we're talking years and years and years. The Center for Disease Control says that 94,000 people get sick every year from contaminated water. 900 of those people die. It's all in their heads. It's media hype. The average American dumps at least 20 pounds of household toxins down the drain every year most of which ends up in the drinking water supply. Personally, I drink tap water. I mean, it's not like we're in Bangladesh. Personally, I feel fine. I mean, I ask you seriously, who's really getting hurt here? 5.8 million children died last year as a result of unsafe drinking water. Not me or my kids, right, Billy? Billy, where are you? Can one person make a difference? Today, 66% of our rivers and lakes are safe for fishing and swimming, a third more than in 1970. One person can make a difference. A message from Echo the Earth Communications Office. And now, Vince and Larry, the crash test dummies with a lullaby. Crumple, crumple, little car, when you crash, it's au revoir. If on dumb luck you rely, through the windshield they will fly. Keep your children off the streets. Put your kids in safety seats. <laughs> crumple, crumple, little car, don't be dummies like we are. <sighs> Gee, Vince, I'm kind of sleepy now. Okay, Larry, just crash anywhere. You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your kids' safety belts. A message from the Department of Transportation and the Ad Council. Oh, come on, have a drink. No, thanks. Just one little drink. I don't want to. Chicken, everyone else is. I said no. What a nerd. One little drink won't kill you. You've heard it all before. Be cool, join the crowd, have a drink, even though you're not 21. Let's go, she's no fun. Make the right choice, don't give in. Underage drinking is dumb and dangerous. Look out! A public service message from the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Yep, it is Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Brittany's our guest tonight from Big Brother. Yeah, I was going to say Full House for some reason. <laughs> oh. <laughs> from Big Brother. Full, uh, wait a minute, it's Full House? No, Facts of Life. That's back on. I'm watching the hell out of that show. Oh, is that right? That is good times for me. Uh, and uh, tune in this Friday, right? And watch the uh, big finale. Yep. And then what about before that? Wednesday. Wednesday, too? What night are you going to be on, Drew? Hmm? Wednesday, someone gets banished. Wednesday, Friday. You're going to be on Wednesday, and Friday? Yeah. We'll catch Dr. Drew, everybody. All right, where are we? All right? Oh. I talked. I was talking to your friend about uh, Burning Man, by the way. He said you're mm -hmm. high as a uh, kite and oh. uh, naked as a jaybird the I'm entire sure she did. time. Absolutely. <laughs> Believe me. She said, how do you know so much? I said, well, don't worry. You don't go over there to, as part of your uh, art scholarship. Mike? Yeah? <clears throat> you're 16. What's up? Yeah, I have been talking to this girl on the internet for about two months now, and I think I know her pretty well because I've talked to her on the phone a lot, and she wants me to go to her house on the 29th, but because her mom will be out of town, what should I do? Mm, well, You're really, gay. here's probably the reality. It's his wife will be out of town, yeah. not uh, her mom will be out of town. How far away is she? <laughs> um, she lives in Orange County, and I live in Riverside County. That's recalculous. 
because that worked it into a sentence. Have you, you know, I, I would Thank strongly, you. if you are. How are you getting over there? Um, my mom's going to take me. I told her that I was going to, like, see one of my friends. <laughs> oh, goodness. your mom. Well. Hey, you know that friend I never talk about who lives in the three counties over? Yeah, I'm going to sleep over. If you are hell-bent on meeting her, meet her in some neutral place first before you go for some yeah. into somebody's house. I would to... say not a good idea. No. Well, what about, wait somewhere halfway between Riverside and Orange County, you may take a friend with you and make sure she takes a friend with her, too. Mm -hmm. And do not, do not. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait a second. Do you speak to her on the phone? Yeah. How often? Like every day. Every day? Yeah. All right. And, uh, and, and you never met her? No. Why didn't you guys ever go out for lunch or something? Um, I don't know, because like... Because he's 16 and they live far apart and he yeah. can't swing it. And how... Uh, and hmm. she's 16 as well? Uh, she's 14. Oof. Oh, don't do it. Yeah, you got to bring some wine coolers, though, and some condoms, Ugh. brother. And your mom's going to drop you over so you can rape this 14-year-old? <laughs> no. <laughs> but she's like, I told her that I was going over to my friend's house. You're right. Way I could, like, Why can't you meet right. girls your own age? Do you have, do you, have you ever seen a picture of her? Yeah. How do you do that? Because, like, on AOL, uh -huh. it's the messenger. Yeah, like, send pictures. Send pictures and I stuff, see. And that's where I met her. Yeah. 14's tough, yeah, going over there to sleep over. No uh, way. Would you no figure, figure way. you're going to have sex? Um, no, we're just gonna like go out and like see if anything happens or anything. Yeah, yeah. We'll meet meet somewhere halfway and each bring a friend. Yeah, all right. Please. Yeah, please. Why why each bring a friend? Just because because it may end up to be you know Uncle Lou. Yeah. Okay. You know what I'm saying? All right. Someone can go mm. get and help Uncle Lou may say, "Oh, Susie's down here. Come with me. I'm gonna show you where my you know." Like, yeah. I see. All right. All right. All right. Bring a friend. Meet uh, somewhere in between. Oh, remember those days of being a 16 year old guy and. <laughs> <laughs> you can't operate. Like, you don't think that way. You go, listen, I don't understand. Just go swing over to her house, pick her up, take her out to a nice lunch, and drop her back off. It's like, I'm 16. I got a moped. No, not my a moped. Mo Never done that before. <laughs> my mom, Never had lunch with anybody. My mom's going to drive me. Not without a breath pack. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh. Rick? Yes. You're uh, 28? Yes. What, what's up? Well, I've got uh, uh, leaky gut syndrome. I was just curious if there was any uh, cures, fixes, remedies, anything like that. How is that leaky how, gut? How is that documented? Well, it, I shouldn't say. I I suspect it to be leaky gut. I, you have I, irritable bowel, right? Well, no. Um, what happens to me is uh, anytime I eat anything with uh, wheat or barley or oats or any type of grain like that, um, if I follow a meal like that with some high protein or high sugar, I get really, really sick and uh, uh, excruciatingly bad headaches and uh, gas. No. Ah, well, hold on. <laughs> it's not exciting. Hey, well, hold on. What's leaky gut syndrome? I think he's talking. There, there's various little theories about there about people having uh, abnormalities of transport of certain it's like chloride ions across those membranes in the certain parts of the bowel. <coughs> well, I wrote and my thesis on that in college. Yeah, and I, you know, this is all sort of theoretical stuff. And if I remember right, some of these things occur like in uh, cystic right. fibrosis. So maybe he has things, irritable so. bowel. He has irritable yeah. bowel. Yeah. And, and what is that? All right. Hey, listen. Hey, Rick. Yeah. You know, uh, Kelsey Grammer heads up the Irritable Bowel Foundation. Does he really? Yes, he does. Him and his wife. Apparently his wife has Irritable Bowel. <laughs> it's a weird thing to lend your name to, but, yes. you know, why not? You know? Hey, so, Rick? Yeah. So, watch Frasier. And, you know, I, I don't know what to say. Why do you, you know, why do you, why don't you keep your meals balanced? Well, no, I, I do. I, All I, right, that's the treatment. All right, well, who should he go to? Nobody. You, you just want to go to a doctor? A psychiatrist. Oh, really? Drew, what happens to you when you uh, eat uh, leeks? No, uh, uh, what, Garlic. scallions. Oof. Yeah. Ugh. You know, I, oh, I ate Mexican the other night. I took a full green scallion, and I shoved the whole thing in my mouth. I Just was chewing it, and I was thinking, boy, it's too bad Drew didn't eat this thing. He'd be <laughs> uh -huh. farting up a storm. I was saying <laughs> to myself, and you, burping, you, you think I have more important stuff to think about than that? <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> it was nice. Very I was thinking nice. about Make you sure and your Eddie ass. Eddie doesn't get his hands on those. I know. They don't. Oh. Yeah. Does he do a lot of farting in the bad, house? bad, yeah. One guy sits in the house just just blows all the time. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Is he loud about it? Oh, oh yeah. He's, 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 oh, that's great. I got to tune the in. The guy's now. bedroom stinks so bad in the morning. Wow. They, they <laughs> pass gas in their sleep. It's so gross. Oh. <laughs> we separated. We made the guys have one bedroom and the girls have one bedroom because the guys stink this so bad. This is the one story that- And they that snore. 
They snore. Curtis snores so bad, and, and it's not even rhythmic. They don't put this not playing this story. And this, this is the interesting story. And the pug, the dog has gas, too. It's yeah. just a big mess in the house. Oh. Yeah, you see, for 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 one second, I was interested <laughs> in the goings-on of the Big Brother house. <laughs> and, and I oh, so I had to bring it to. down to your level. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Can I see some of the notes you took at Burning Man? <laughs> you were just a casual observer, right? All right, I'm going to go get the uh, more dirt on you on uh, Brittany from Big Brother from her friend in the next room, and we'll be back after this. Love line. Love line. 1 800 love 191. Um, back in a minute. Remember what college cost in the early 80s? Uh, tuition? Yeah, books, typewriter, room and board. Well, yeah, a bundle. Was it worth it? Well, of course, every penny. And get this, now it's over twice what you paid. Well, yeah, but I don't have to worry about my kids' college bills for another 15 years. <laughs> well, if costs keep hiking up and up, you'll be shelling out more in just one year for each of your children than you spent on yourself for all four years of college. Ouch! So what do I do? You better start saving today with U.S. savings bonds. They're easy to buy and afford and are guaranteed safe. Yeah. And savings bonds earn a treasury-based rate of interest right from the start. Wow. Uh, where do I find them? At most banks. Or ask your employer about the payroll savings plan. But whatever you do, start saving now or you'll be... Rooting for a scholarship? Exactly. <laughs> Mommy, can I have a drink of water? Remember the last time you changed your motor oil? You let it flow down a storm drain. It found its way into our waters. So did that paint you tossed in the garbage, as well as those fertilizers you might have used a few too many of. If you think your actions have no effect on our waters, think again. Thank you, Mommy. You can help preserve our waters, not only for your sake, but for hers. Recycle used motor oil. Dispose of paint and household toxins properly. Practice composting and use lawn and garden products sensibly. It's a small price to pay to preserve our greatest natural resource, and the reasons for doing so can be just as small. Good night, Mommy. Clean water. If we all do a little, we can do a lot. To find out how to help reclaim our waters, call 1-800-504-8484. That's 1-800-504-8484. Brought to you by the Natural Resources Defense Council, the Ad Council, and the EPA. Oh, come on, have a drink. No, thanks. Just one little drink. I don't want to. Chicken, everyone else is. I said no. What a nerd. One little drink won't kill you. You've heard it all before. Be cool, join the crowd, have a drink, even though you're not 21. Let's go, she's no fun. Make the right choice, don't give in. Underage drinking is dumb and dangerous. Look out! A public service message from the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. And now, Vince and Larry, the crash test dummies with a lullaby. Crumple, crumple, little car, when you crash, it's au revoir. If on dumb luck you rely, through the windshield they will fly. Keep your children off the streets, put your kids in safety seats. Crumple, crumple, little car, don't be dummies like we are. <sighs> Gee, Vince, I'm kind of sleepy now. Okay, Larry, just crash anywhere. You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your kids' safety belts. A message from the Department of Transportation and the Ed Council. McGruff here at the airport with some tips that can help make your traveling safer. Uh, pardon me, sir. Hmm? Hey, hey, aren't you, uh... McGruff the crime dog. <laughs> yeah, I thought I recognized the pause. Uh, where do you keep your wallet? My hip pocket. Well, uh, look over there at that man at the ticket counter. So? The guy behind him in line just bumped him. Yeah? And he could have picked his pocket while the man was talking to the ticket agent. Just like someone could have picked yours while you were looking over there. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Put your wallet in your front pants pocket or your briefcase. Oh, yeah, yeah, really, sure. Another thing, hold on to that laptop computer all the time. Don't put it down. It's too easy for someone to pick it up when you turn your head. Oh, hey, you know, you're just full of good advice. Uh, thanks, McGrath. You're welcome. Uh, just remember, keep your wallet in a safe place. Never leave your bags or valuables unattended, even for a minute. No. Do that and you'll be helping uh, take, take a, a bite, bite out, out of crime. crime. You got it. A public service message from me, McGruff, the U.S. Department of Justice, the Crime Prevention Coalition, and the Ad Council. Dad, can you and Olivia, can me and Olivia and you take me to 
to the zoo? Kids need dads when they're babies. Daddy, can I tell you a secret? I think there is a monster under my bed. When they're little, when they're teens, when they're young adults. Dad, all my friends stay out till midnight. But sadly, most kids don't have a dad to rely on. Dad, I met the most amazing person the other day, and I was just wondering, how did you know that Mom was the one? Because most dads spend less than 10 minutes a day with their kids. Dad, should I invest in a CD or a mutual fund? And what do you think? Being a dad is real simple. All it takes is time, and it takes a man to be a dad. Call 1-800-790-DADS for free, helpful information. A message from the National Fatherhood Initiative and the Ad Council. Just because you rich today doesn't mean the rest of us have to. Shandala, 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 shandala. Adam, we're on the air. No, we don't care. <laughs> we've done a million of these shows. This is just one other. This is just a crappy one we've done. We won't even remember. Uh, I just got done whacking off to my mom. No, how oh. dare you. How dare you, Anderson. Shandala, shandala, shandala. No, That's when uh, Born Again Frank I used to work with at the closet place in Burbank. I uh, used to break into tongues right. once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so lucky I didn't kill myself. I really planned on it for so many years. Brittany's our guest tonight from uh, Big Brother, and uh, she got tossed out, but uh, they're going to declare oh, a winner. banished is banished, the word. Sorry. Banished. Banished to me is heavier than tossed <laughs> out. I'd rather be tossed out than banished. Yes. First, you're marked for banishment. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> and then you're banished. Yeah, see, being tossed out me, to, to me means you can come back when you get your ass together. Like when you sober up and change your underpants, you might be able to come back. Right, you've been exiled for a while. Banished, a of banished exile. means you ain't never <laughs> getting back. But you don't want to go back, right? I'd like to go back, actually. You would? Knowing what I know now, I'd, li That's <laughs> I'd why like they to didn't go let back. You back in. I know, yeah. They, the house guests got to pick somebody to go back in. And yeah. they didn't pick me. Oh. You know what's interesting? You know what's interesting? I, I don't know if you can. Are you watching tapes now or anything? I've watched some of them, yeah. Eddie really misses you. Aww. Are you aware of that? Oh, he's a sweetie. He really does. One that he could swear at and yell at and blew him off. Yeah, I think, right. I why mean, the, Eddie and I had a connection where he didn't. He could be himself. His, yeah, yeah. obscenities didn't yeah. offend me at all. They why'd, why'd they have the camera in the bathroom? I, I never. Oh, they don't want people to, to sneak into the toilet area and make out or tell secrets. So I see. They don't roll film, apparently. They're not supposedly, they're not rolling film they roll unless. They audio? Unless, well. They just watch. They, they just watch. But there's film there in case you try to sneak in there. And they have it in the shower, too. So there's a camera on you in the shower because they don't want people to go in the shower and talk about stuff. So. But they say it's for our protection, too. If we slip and fall, you know, then they know that we're injured and can help us. Well, but how does someone know when you slip and fall in I your mean. duplex in Minneapolis? Yeah. So. Well, wait a minute, But though. they just, they don't want any privacy, and that's I, the I, point. I understand that, but do they have the roll tape when you're in the shower? No. They say they don't. They, they, they have it on monitors. They, they, they only roll tape if someone is going to go in the shower and do something not showering, you know? Right. So they watch, though. Mm -hmm. Yep. They watch they when log. you're... Well, there's a whole bunch of monitors. There's like Speaking 20, 30 monitors, and it's one of them. Hold on. Speaking of logs, <laughs> when you're on the toilet, <sighs> they're watching? Yes. Yes. Yes, they Ooh. are. Jesus Christ. How the guys jack off? Oh, yeah, that, they, that, they don't. There's big oh, discussions about that. Yes, it's called... Oh, oh, in the house, it's called breaking the seal. Yeah. And it was a daily Nobody topic. Has it? anyone broken the seal? And they don't do that? Listen, I'd want no. more than 500 grand for uh, <laughs> 39 days. Or how many days yeah. is this? 90. How, 90? Yeah. 1 million. <laughs> yeah. Do you hear me? With, with One million. And I'd like to apologize <laughs> One to my parents dollars. on the air for talking mm. about it. Sorry for embarrassing you. Are you <laughs> kidding me? No. I talked about it in the house and it made one of the episodes. Really? Yeah. Uh, but what about, I mean... 
is a guy supposed to make it 90 days? Does he? Can he have a, a conjugal visit with his hand or something they've like got, that? They've got to be some emission problems. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, well, there's blankets. I, just, I, I mean, no one's going to admit, but there's blankets. So I bet something goes on. Oh yeah. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Listen, guys do it at like camp and while they're sleeping over their yeah. grandparents' house and yeah. all of it. Well, we I make got... a joke because Eddie rubs his foot at night. He he ru- rocks it back and forth, and mm-hmm. so we always make fun of him, say it's oh, a cover. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, I, had, I, had, I had a friend. I won't. I won't mention his name. Squeezed one off in the bed with his dad. Oh, you know, like his oh. dad. Oh you know, it was probably like California King or something. His dad's on one side. He's on the other. Squeezed one off. I mean, that's commitment. It's not like they were sleeping together for weeks either. It was like one night. You know. Yeah, oh, yeah that's, that's commitment. Yeah. Oh, I would have broken well. that seal. I would have intentionally got myself. I would have tried to uh, set fire to the house. Got myself <laughs> tossed out so I could go masturbate. Oh. Oh, are you kidding? 90 days? Impossible. Impossible. But young guys? No way. <laughs> You're shaking your head. <laughs> no way. He's right. I, I, he's right. No way. No, I'm, I mean, like some of those guys are in their uh, mid-20s, early right? 20s. Yeah. Early 20s. Yeah. A guy in his mid-early 20s, um, three days is a pretty good haul. Four or five days is uh, Jesus. Well, no one admitted up. to it by the time I left, and that was two months in. Two months, no way, no way. I think Adam's right. No mm. way. And what about what, what about taking showers and stuff? Are you uncomfortable that there's some guys in a in a? Well, I actually boot? wear my bathing suit. Both Cassandra and I wear. Oh, bathing you wear suits. your bathing suit. Yeah, I did. Well, everybody else except one day I didn't. We painted ourselves. We were animals. Oh, I see. I was a giraffe, uh-huh. and I couldn't get the paint off. So one time I had to take uh, my bathing believe suit. Believe me, that's on a tape somewhere. I know. You CBS. said Jordan did some strip tease thing in front of the cameras one night. Well, she um. She was not embarrassed about taking off her clothes in front of the camera. And, um, you know, it, it wasn't really a, like she didn't dance or anything for us. She just uh, oh. would ap- apply lotion like you would at home or change. Like, I mean, she was very uninhibited. Well, what about when you're on uh, the But not, she didn't do it in front of the, the men. It was mm. just in the girls' mm. bedroom. And, well, what you know, about the toilet, though? Yeah, you just sit there and you... For me personally, I would sit down and cover my face and go, okay, I'm going to go now. I'm going to go now. For some reason, if I talked <laughs> my way through it, I felt better. I don't oh, know why. Gosh. I know. And then I'd say, I'm so embarrassed. I'm so embarrassed. So. Oh, my God. We're on TV. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. Oh, boy. De- Devin. Hey. And what's up? I have a lot to say, but I'm going to make it fast, okay? All right. All right. Drew, it's an honor. Thanks, Devin. Adam, I'm your long-lost daughter. Great. Brittany, I don't watch the show. I don't know who you are, but I hope you're having a good day. Thank right. you. Thanks, Devin. It's you're fantastic. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, she whatever. deserves it for not knowing about the man show. <laughs> <laughs> Pretending oh. like she didn't know about the man show. She doesn't know what the man, know what the man yeah. show is. Your friend told you all about it in the car the ride man on the way show? here. Listen to what is your, it all just men running around? Listen to your governor. Do you know who Jesse Ventura is? The governor of your great state? Oh. Of course. Best show on television. That, the man no. show. That's oh, right. The best. <laughs> the best. If you can best. take well, it what, as a what joke. Is it? What is it? It's the man show. Well, it's, a- <laughs> <laughs> it's the man show. Yeah. That's unprompted, too. I've never met the man before. The man show. Thank all you. All right, Dan, what's your question? Okay. First, just a few. Okay. Do you guys keep, like, tapes of previous shows that you can, like, sell or whatever? No. Oh, us? Oh, you talking about the radio <gasps> show? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> no. That's just funny. Just asking. Sorry. I know. That'd just be funny. Here, picture uh, get hitting up Ann for those. <laughs> <laughs> she went, huh? <laughs> I'm sorry. I just wanted to know. That's all right. And uh, when are you going to have corn on next, man? Yeah, that's, that's a good a question. While. Yeah, that's a good question. <gasps> it has been a while. Yeah. See, it is time yeah, for corn to come around. We'll work on that. I'll get, the, I'll get Ann on that. Next All right, this is... Hi, this is Jonathan. This is Billy. Oh, my from God. Porn, and you're listening to Adam Carolla and yeah, Dr. Dr. Drew on... Blind <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. We'll get Ann. I haven't talked to Ann a couple of weeks, but when she comes <laughs> in again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right um, what else? Really quick. I have, like, a sleeping problem where, like, when I go to bed, I go to bed around 1030, and I can't fall asleep until, like, 1 in the morning. Okay. Do they have, like, a name for that? And Insomnia. What? What? Insomnia and stupidity. Start going well, to bed at one. Is where you can't sleep at all, isn't it? No, insomnia is where you have difficulty sleeping. Oh, okay. Hold on, listen. Go to bed at one. That's what I do. Okay. <laughs> well, then you'll fall right asleep. Yeah, but it's still a problem. Cause well, do you feel up, like, tired five. during the day, or do you feel like you're rested? I'm always tired. Are you depressed? Yeah. All right. Well, depression is one of the reasons people can have trouble sleeping. What's the matter? Mm, 
I'm just depressed. Why? Because my family's retarded. Well, so is mine, but what? Yeah, but you were depressed, too. Oh, that's true. (laughs) Can you play football? Can I play football? Softball. Or softball. (laughs) Can you do something? You know what I mean? Oh. Yeah. You overweight? Yeah. What are you? Do I have to say? Well, if you don't say, we're going to guess the worst. Uh, guess the worst, then. Uh, You're fat. Three feet, 700 pounds. No. <laughs> Heavier? Shorter? Uh, no. no. Um, what are you? I'm five, five and a half, and I weigh 240. All right. You're overweight. <clears throat> Hold on. I'm going to do some. No, ra- no, no. I'm don't doing, do the math. I'm doing the don't radio work. math. Five, five and a half, seven, give me four. So that is uh, five, two and three quarters and 273. Mm. Whatever. All right. Anyway. So listen, Devin. <clears throat> huh. I know you're depressed. Okay. Uh, but here's what you got to do. You got to start watching your diet and getting yourself some exercise and feeling better. And about find yourself. something, yeah, that you can do that you like to do that gives you some sense of worth and Football. purpose. <laughs> All right, that's fine. Right on. Okay, my other question. <laughs> yeah. I um she had some weird side that. effects with my medication, so <laughs> I went to the doctor t- for, to talk to him about it. Right. Yeah. All right. And he told me it was all in my head. What's that the medicine? Right? What? What's the medicine? Zoloft. And what's the side effect? Uh, my throat would close. My tongue would swell up. I'd start throwing up and all this sort of stuff. Hmm. And I asked him about it. He's like, oh, you're imagining it. I'm like, okay. Well, it, it's it's not the kind of symptom that you would have occasionally from Zoloft. If you're going to have a true allergic reaction that's wheezing and throat closing that goes on and on, it gets worse the more you take the medicine it doesn't pass. And if you're anxious and panicky and vomit, that you're anxious and panicky and vomiting. That's a different problem. Mm. Oh, it's so depressing. Listen, what, Devin. about adolescence? No, I'm, yeah, I'm just, I'm just I, I realize what a hell Devin's life is, and then I know once uh, your life becomes hellish, you just withdraw, and then you make your life hellish on your own. Like, here's right. how it works. Everyone else turns your life into hell for a while, and then eventually you push them out, and you take over. Right. You, you then drive you, your life. You're the person whose life is hell. Yes. You're that person. And you become the, uh, the the guy in the Satan outfit cracking the whip and laughing maniacally yeah, yeah. instead of society, yeah. classmates, parents, <laughs> that kind of stuff. Yeah. And and I'm telling you, uh, you got to take control of your life. Yeah. You do. And and it's real simple stuff. Well, you actually said something kind of interesting one time years ago. Uh, when you, when you and whoa, I were, whoa. Yeah, he whoa. did. He, whoa. Said whoa. Something, he said something interesting one time. <laughs> oh. We were in Panama City. I remember the moment. Is that archived? Remember? No, we were in Panama City <laughs> doing the TV show down there. Remember that? Yeah. And you first told me your philosophy on the only thing you can change is yourself and taking responsibility is the key. Remember, really? Remember that? Yeah, when Ooh. I thought we were going to die on the plane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was that moment. Yeah. But that's, why'd you, why don't you give him that in your... I don't remember that word. That you... Ha- <laughs> I forget now. No, that you have to be responsible. You can't blame other things in your life. You have to take responsibility for everything. That's the, the safest route to go. Yes. Just assume whatever happens in your life is your fault, even if it's not. And just go go from there. But here's the there. key. Don't beat yourself up about it. Just take responsibility for it and then change figure it, out ways change, to change yeah, it. Yeah. I mean, if you show up, if you show up to a store at noon on a Tuesday and it's closed, and every store in the world should be open at noon on a Tuesday. Still say to yourself, I should have called yeah. to make sure it was open. Next time. That, that's the only way you'll get anything out of it. Other than that, you just wasted gas and went home. And if you said, oh, those sons of bitches and got pissed off at them, then it did you no good. So you might as well disclaim it. And uh, you don't have to call yourself stupid. You can still admit that they should have been open. But you go, next time I'll call. And that's it. And you do that with everything in life. Eventually, you get... To where you want to be, Aaron. Yes. Yeah, I don't want to talk to you though. I want to. I'd rather talk to uh, Sarah over here for a second. Sarah. Hello. What's up? Hey, Adam. I just want to tell you that you're awesome. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Brittany. Yeah. I just want to say that you're awesome too. <laughs> oh, thank you. And I just, I love you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thanks. And I have a couple questions for you. Okay. What is uh, what are you gonna be doing like as of show business, or are you? Yes, I'm going to be moving out to LA, and I did sign with an agent. I signed with Willie Morris, and basically, I've never acted before, so I'm starting to take classes. And, and there's a bunch of offers that that I'm going through, and I'm definitely gonna follow up on the entertainment business. Aren't you sort of going down the host path, hosting things? It, it's something that's there. There's yeah. It hasn't been anything written up, no contract signed, so I'm not exactly sure what I can talk about, mm. but 
But, but um, I mean, those kinds of things are things you're Those kind of things. I mean, it's anything from a VJ to hosting a talk show to commercials to acting. I mean, any of it. Right now, all of it's being thrown at me, and I'm having my agent kind of sift through it and see what would be best for me. <laughs> I think you should be on MTV. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I've heard that actually from a few plenty people. Plenty of room so. over there now. <laughs> and um, also, like, what is your relationship going to be between Josh and you after he gets off the show? You know, that's a tough one to say. I'm, first of all, he's still in the show, so it's hard to know what feelings would be outside the show. I mean, it's yeah. when you're in it, when you're stuck in that house, and the only people that are there to be a friend or a boyfriend or anything are those few people that were selected to be in the house. That's your world. So, so did, did you hook up with one of the guys? I didn't hook up with them, but there was, you know. Some tension. There was tension, yeah. Well, we got that. And, uh, y- you and Brittany? No, me and you. Oh, me and you. <laughs> dare you. I mean, I think I think he's a great guy. I'm, you know, to be honest, I've seen the tapes and I'm a little bit angry with some of the stuff that I've seen. Uh-huh. And I've definitely right the position I'm in right now. I'm not interested <laughs> in anything. Why? But did you talk to him about? You know, well, I haven't talked to him because he's still in the house. But, I know, but you know, the house does do weird things to your head. And when he does get out, I'm, you know, we're for sure gonna talk. Well, how do you know he's interested? I don't. I don't. Well, He's still in the house. Y- we haven't. But you assume I got he is. banished, and I didn't get a chance to talk. No, but I, I know. Some, but there was some chemistry oh. while you were in the house. He's a guy. I know, but uh, <laughs> how long? Hold on. How long were you with him? How long were you in the house with him? Uh, two months. Two months. Brittany's mm-hmm. a virgin. See. And oh, really? Oh <laughs> yes. Oh baby. I figured he didn't you? know <laughs> since you hadn't read it up. I just turned twenty-six. Uh oh. Oh, brother. the floodgates have opened. Uh oh. And and. And are you religious? No. Uh oh. So something happened. I mean, I believe in God, but I'm not. What happened? Something, Nothing. Something bad? Nope. Little molestation? No. Nope. Something. No, I know. Something. Yeah, I know you're not going to believe me, but I've. Uh, no. Something. Where's dad? Great family. Parents still know. Uh, no. <laughs> Seriously, what happened? Nothing happened. Something happened. I don't have a fear or an issue. I. Uh, uh, no Please. alcohols in the family anywhere? Nope. You're not going to no get alcohol, oh, fire, 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 fire. Your dad's, your folks are from Minnesota? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everyone in Minnesota is an alcoholic. No. <laughs> they don't call themselves so alcoholics they, because everyone's an years. alcoholic. No, they they don't drink. I mean, they have alcohol if they uh-huh. have friends over, mm-hmm. but they don't. What's your dad do? Uh, he owns a bakery in real estate. Aha. Uh-huh. Yeah. Have you ever any kind of treatment or anything of any type? Treatment? I mean, any attempted suicide. Oh no, anything, nothing, nothing. No. nothing. No. I don't you, smoke. I don't even. You, I'm not even addicted uh, to you caffeine. You use some language sometimes that suggests a sophistication about those kinds of things. No, that's just you. No, that's yeah, I've, <laughs> I've attended things with my friends <laughs> that have twelve step type stuff. Well, just I had some friends that got into drugs and stuff. Because you, you yeah. I, I yeah. About burning you man, used that language once yeah. and I thought, where is that coming from? Yeah. Like, I have a friend that so. um, right. was an alcoholic. See, what happened? Alcoholic were you were you uh, grossly overweight when you were young? No, it's just it was one of those things when most of my friends had sex in junior high, right. and I was very much tomboy, very much afraid of boys, just mm. didn't want to deal. Mm. wasn't very popular in junior high. Got mm. to senior high, and um, all of a sudden, all the seniors <laughs> on the tenth graders, and um, it was just get the tenth graders. I had this this apprehension about it all right but that, that was 10 years ago i know you, i'm about the last moving on through last seven years so all, i mean all through high school i never really dated anybody more than a month or two i just i don't all know right. i had my own things okay. going on something's up then what i graduate up? i'm still a virgin and it's a big deal right i right. go to college it's a big deal I work full-time to school full-time i never i mean i dated but my longest relationship was six months uh-huh. in college mm-hmm. and so i mean i have seriously i have um Fear of commitment, obviously uh-huh. that's clear. Mm-hmm. I Why? I look at yeah. Where do you get? That? I think because most of my friends or, or a lot of girls that I know get into a guy and then they say, you know, they break up and all the only memory they have of the past three years was their three year relationship that a year and a half of it was awful and they fought and and I almost feel like that would take away. I think of all the things I've done. I've traveled, gone to school overseas. Like I've done so much stuff mm. that I probably wouldn't have done if I was in a serious relationship. And yeah. I, I look at it as I have my whole life to be in a serious relationship mm. and be connected to someone. Yeah, we don't believe any of it. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you so, don't, no, but I just thumbs up. I just I what is I that? don't really. Your mom I don't and your want dad get along well, huh? Yeah. Always. 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 They're awesome. They still flirt. They've been married 30 years. Her mom, I met her mom. So mom is, is really They're nice, awesome. Nice. My dad, dad's awesome. He paid attention to you? Yeah. 
He has two jobs, though. He wasn't too wrapped up in those. Mm-mm. Oh, no. He <laughs> ah. he was a magician and nope. would do magic oh, at our birthday oh, parties. Oh, 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 oh. Pedophile. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yes. My dad's awesome. No, I was, I completely, I wanted to be my dad when I was little. I was totally daddy's little girl until, until I got to be 14. It was way too cool to, like, either one of my parents for a few years. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of issues there. And then, you know, teenage and then. All right. You get older and well, you're fine. All right. Well, we're not getting to it. You're lucky we didn't gamble on this one. There's got to be something, though. Yeah. 26 you... virgin, huh? Yeah. Hyman's still intact? <laughs> she hasn't checked lately, huh? <gasps> yeah, she has. I know. If you guys can figure it out, because I really, it's not a religious thing. It's not. And I'm not sure you'd think, okay, I'd like to wait till marriage, but realistically, I'm going to fall in love with someone and I'm well, going to want to be with them. I, I'll go I along just, with you it, on, on the fact that at a certain point, it gets too weird, weird yeah. and it gets yeah. to be bigger than it is. Now it's huge. And now, and now you're, you're when I date someone, the, the yeah. shadow of your hymen. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, and now, I, now I want it. Now I'm like, I'm in my 20s. Uh, that's what no, happened. You graduated, weird. then I yeah. got out of college, and I'm like, now yeah. it's this huge monumental thing yeah. that I'm not going to do unless I'm totally in love. And no. You screwed now, yeah. But, yeah. But you got but that's this window. Yeah. You got yeah. this window from like, well, if you're one of our callers from ten. <laughs> for, now you got this window from like, eh, from like fifteen to eighteen and a half or something, maybe nineteen. And you got to get drunk and have your boyfriend do it to you in a car down by the lake mm-hmm. or whatever. And if you don't get it in then, it's it, then it, it, you're off to college and now it becomes weird. And, and now it's weird and it's probably a little weird for the dude because maybe yeah. you're, oh, it you're dating is. a guy and the guy's 28 and he's thinking, uh, geez, I don't know if I want all this. I mean, it, I, I and people I, go to the place where you went right away. What's wrong? Were you molested? Yeah. What's wrong with your dad? And you're just like, are you religious? Are you psycho? And it's just. Yeah. I don't know what well, to you say. Know, certain, after twenty, well, but guys, some... guys don't want to sort of don't want to take it on. I would. You, mean, you, you would. Oh, yeah, there's right plenty that want to take it on. <laughs> but but, you, but you, you know what I mean? A guy that you yeah. would want to be yeah. with would be one like, oh, I don't know if I'm ready to. Yeah. Oh, and it's definitely been problems. You know, when you date someone this age, you date someone for a few months and you're intimate with them, and yeah. it comes to the point where there's yeah, I have a lot of relationship issues with you know, you don't care about me as much as I care about you, or you'd want to, and. Oh boy! You know, yeah, uh, it's. Uh, so uh, what? How? What? Yeah, oral sex? Gotten that in? Right? <laughs> oh, I'm not talking about oh, this on okay. the show. Hold on, let me check that box off. <laughs> 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 it's a big affirmative. Maybe she's one of these people that has the the plain. Ah uh, yes. Thing. Uh, so anal and oral. Fine, no, but, no, uh, no, 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 no. I don't go there. All right. Well, of course <laughs> you gotta get. Yeah, I mean, you got to get through the uh, gate before you get to the Matterhorn. It's weird, though. I don't have a fear of it. And that's the what anal or the... Uh, well, once I do, I'm yeah, not going to come. I mean, okay. once it's... You know, I don't have this... Holy I Christ. don't know. I, I I would like it, doctor, <laughs> if you could explain True, to me it. what the issue is. Because I, I, think I it's don't... Just, I think it's just one of those things. Well, Now, I heard you talking to George one night. You were going to mm-hmm. help his daughter. Remember you were saying... Yeah, it. about the, Decide. And what was that going to be? What my, was that talking about? My point was that I think a lot of girls and a lot of my friends would like to take back their first time because they were dating someone. They really didn't know what was going on. They really liked him. It got emotional, and it just kind of happened. Mm. And what I was going to talk to his daughters about was for for me and for what I know of my friends that they make mistakes in high emotional situations where they're not thinking. And my point is fine. I mean, if you are young and you want to have sex, you know, go ahead. I don't, I don't have a problem. I don't think that everyone should remain a virgin. I just think everyone should make it a choice and not to feel pressured by a boyfriend and not to feel like you're a prude and that you're a loser and you're a dork and, you know, but not to get on this high horse. I'm a virgin. I'm better than you. Just make a conscious decision and act on that. Make good decisions. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And what so, uh, you know, she, Brittany could be the healthiest person on earth. She, <laughs> she could be. But or she, I'm so messed she up. She's so messed up. She's coming healthy on the, coming on the other side. I mean, I, it's just no, about I, choices. Right. But, right. All right. I I have a concept, but I'll, I'll okay. share it. I'll share it off the air. Okay. I'll share it off. Right. The air. Um, meantime, we're going to break. Yeah. So what's your gynecologist think? That he must marvel at your vagina. <laughs> he must he must be like Well, I mean oh everybody thinks it's strange. Everybody thinks it's strange. No, but I mean is it like when a mechanic 
like uh, uh the uh, never been driven bugatti it comes, comes yeah my <laughs> my stepdad used to change the oil in his car like every 500 feet you know he'd get out and change the oil. like if we drove to san francisco he'd change it 11 times on the way there so whenever a mechanic would look at his car he'd always want to hug my stepdad he'd go oh this is great oh look at this oh that's beautiful you've done you've done you i'm so proud you know i'm really proud is your a gynecologist that way you know I mean, do they well, beam no i don't go in there and you don't say, need I'm to so proud of you, well, you, you <laughs> i don't get that, you don't get that? i no. get hmm so we don't have to check y'all you know, these vaginal <laughs> diseases and stuff yeah. i don't have to go through all that i just get you're the, in and out of there you probably, yeah you don't even have to get in the fast. stirrups right you're just in the you just walk through hit the uh fill out the little yeah. check the box and yeah. hand it back in and they tend to come back in next week yes, right my or next year really checkups are quick so. oh yeah oh baby think of think of all you've avoided yeah, you know that, I mean? that's the point. Yeah, right. Wouldn't those be healthy choices? No, but avoid it. All right. Yeah. Oh. Let me say avoid. Right. During the break, we'll talk yeah. about what. Okay. Avoid <laughs> meaning <laughs> what void. I, my fears. Void. <laughs> a void. We'll uh, take a little break. We'll be back. Hey. hey. Hello. Who's this? Hey. Uh, this is Love Line. One eight hundred Love One Nine One. Love Line. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Martin Short with today's Eco Quiz. Okay, you separated the bottles, jars, and cans and put them out for pickup or drop them at a recycling center. What else do you have to do to complete the recycling process? Here's the answer to today's Eco Quiz. You have to buy recycled products. You see, separating the bottles, jars, and cans and dropping them off at a recycling center is only half of the recycling process. Recycling just won't work unless we all make an effort to buy new products made from recycled materials. That way, we'll encourage manufacturers to use more recycled materials. So do your part. When you shop, look for labels that say, made with recycled content. What it gets down to is this. If you're not buying recycled products to close the loop, you're not really recycling. Get involved, get the facts, recycle, and buy recycled. November 15th is America Recycles Day. For a free brochure, call 1-800-CALL-EDF. This message from the Ad Council, the Steel Recycling Institute, and US EPA. This is going to sound corny, but I just wanted to tell the world about my girlfriend, Lisa. I love sitting there, listening to her talk on the phone with her girlfriend. I mean, she can go on for hours to anybody about anything. And it's not just about everyday things. It's about deeper stuff, too, like hair and hair products. And little by little, the phone becomes like a permanent part of her head. I get goosebumps just thinking about that. And then, then there's the way she sort of unhinges her jaws. She scarfs down a quart of double fudge chunk ice cream. She's a keeper. You know, I used to waste my time going inline skating and playing basketball with my buddies. What was I thinking? Girls, rest assured, you will never in your life meet a guy like this. I have this fantasy. There we are, 50 years from now. She's in a moo-moo, doing her nails, watching soap operas all day. Ooh. Get some exercise. Get up. Get out. A public service message brought to you by the Ad Council and the President's Council on Physical Fitness and Sports. Somewhere in our community is a mother whose drug abuse once left her unable to care for her kids. There's a father, too whose alcohol use drove his wife and children away. There's a boyfriend whose drug use frightened his girlfriend into giving him an ultimatum, get help or I'm gone. Help is available. It's in the form of treatment programs for drug abuse and alcohol problems. And the good news is that these programs are making a big difference in people's lives. With proper treatment, mothers and fathers, sweethearts and coworkers, friends and neighbors are overcoming drug and alcohol problems and reclaiming their lives. Isn't it great that treatment works? To find out about drug and alcohol treatment programs that can help, call 1-800-662-HELP. That's 1-800-662-HELP. There is help, and it works. A public service of this station and the Center for Substance Abuse Treatment. Dad, I don't think our campfire's totally out. Are you kidding me? I know when a campfire's out. Did you drown the fire with water and stir it with a stick? No, it's out. We don't have to... Who said that? Frank, it's a talking moose with sunglasses. And a bunch of singing and dancing forest animals. We know we can count on you to do what Smokey says. And when your folks desire to build a fire. Hot, hot. Clear brush and branches away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And keep water nearby like you oughta. 
Okay, I poured water on the fire. I stirred it with a stick. Everybody walked slowly toward the RV. Dad, these are just Smokey's friends. Only you can prevent forest fires. Frank, it's Smokey. Nice hat, Smokey. You want the rest of my peanut butter sandwich? Dad! Visit Smokey at www.smokeybear.com. Brought to you by the USDA Forest Service, the National Association of State Foresters, and the Ad Council. Nate Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. True over there. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Brittany's here from Hello. Big Brother. Brittany is uh, banished from the house, but uh, that's all right. She'll parlay that into a nice uh, hosting gig <laughs> or uh, some other uh, Hollywood type uh, acting gig. Welcome to the hotline that connects large women with men who are dwarfs. That's right. She may be doing some very lucrative voiceover work. In the uh, very near future. All right, and uh, check out uh, Big Brother Wednesday night, and Wednesday then again on uh, Friday right. night. That's CBS, it. eight o'clock. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't know about Friday though, because it's after some yeah, I don't, survivor I don't thing. Even know. Eight forty. I <laughs> never know. I just wait for the phone call. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that'll uh, that'll be on. Oh, you know, I saw us uh, tonight on uh, uh, behind the music. Us. Yeah, because uh, they had something hosted by Kathy Griffin. You know, you know the beauty uh, is uh, with being a uh, uh, A slash B celebrity like myself B and like Drew. C. Oh, oh, did I say A slash B? Do you have Christ. celebrity status? No, I'm B slash C. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm a B slash uh, C celebrity. Oh, after all, I was asked to play in a uh, softball game in uh, Valencia. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Here's my point. Um, you do a bunch of little stuff that you don't remember doing, and then it shows up, and you don't. No one ever tells you when it's going to be on. That was always a one. I'll tell you the biggest disappointment in this uh, career for me has been. I always figured you knew when you were on TV. No way. We have no idea. We did this thing for VH1 where they're they're doing like a best of behind the music, and they interview a lot of different people and ask them what they think of the show and this and that and the other. And we did this thing about what three or four months ago. If you remember, what are you talking about? and I guess it aired for the first time tonight. And I was just sort of flipping through the stations, and uh, there I was talking about uh, some guy from Poison. Poison. Yeah, it was a best of behind the music, and then there you were later on in the show, huh. and uh, had zero. I, aren't people supposed to tell us? Doesn't it? Adam, shouldn't you listen, know? All right, we did, wait, wait, it, listen. When we, when we did the show for MTV, right? Any idea when it aired? No, no. Okay, okay. that was every night. Okay, but right. still shouldn't. Well, so you figured it was on one of those nights, Aaron. Yes. You're uh, 18. Mm-hmm. What's up? Well, I was just wondering if uh, the fact that I have a small penis could be caused by my excessive masturbation. <laughs> Wait a minute, the kid may have a point. Yeah, maybe there's a trend oh, here. Oh mm. no, Adam, lay off. Maybe things will be okay. Don't care. Okay. Not no, Aaron. No. 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 Well, you think you're eroding it? You think you're, uh, like, I don't know. Your uh, hand is like the uh, Colorado River, and your penis is like the the walls of uh, the Grand Canyon. That's a little erosion <laughs> humor <laughs> there. Yeah. Okay, Aaron, have fun. Okay. Then not only with your penis, but just in the rest uh, for the rest of your life. All right. Uh, all right. You know what I've noticed, Adam? Hey, Aaron. Yes. Don't smoke uh, Pot, weed. Yeah. That will shrink. Seriously. That'll get things. Th- th- your your penis may shrink. I'll spend a few months for that. <laughs> yeah. All right. You're gonna have a hard time getting a job. That's all I'm saying. All right. All right, buddy. Good. All right. Listen, you know, right all on. you stupid people, don't make yourself any dumber. That's all I'm saying. And you smart people, if you want to make yourself average, that's fine. I have no problem with that. I'm just noticing, Adam, just, Brittany just smitten with you. Just, just Yeah, look at that face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm She's sorry. Me. You're like, what the <laughs> hell is up with this guy? That's right. I, I'd love to see the big balloon over her head. <laughs> it's like, what is up with this one? <laughs> That's right. Is it that obvious what I'm thinking? No, baby. <laughs> you know you're into me. You're very into me. And a couple months, too. You're not going to be riding this. Oh, morning. God. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. Please. Oh, yeah. I didn't want to bring that up. Yeah, but, oh, and I've yeah. never she's heard got, that she, before. But she's got oh, some, you're going to hear it. But she's got some horsepower or anything. Uh, hmm? yeah, what's I've the got date? some what? What's horsepower? The date? To go do something else with, oh. with the oh, position yeah. you're in. Yes. Yeah. What's the date today? 
Uh, so September 24th. Maybe. Uh, yeah, that's right. Well, uh, we should we should meet up around February. We'll see. I bet you'd be more attractive to me. <laughs> <laughs> I think you will. I think that'll be it. It's all position, Drew. You know how that goes? Oh, you're such a sweet talker. Uh, do you want a blowjob or do you want a girlfriend? Who is that? <laughs> that was... That was w- not me. No, that <laughs> was... Uh, the, the, what's her name? The one you were making fun of? Yeah. P- yeah. Caprice. Oh, that prima donna Caprice. bitch. Caprice, who came in here like a year ago, and she was all full of her crap, and uh, I wanted to do something with her for the man show, and she wouldn't do it, and she was a big pain in the ass, and I remember just thinking, just enjoy it, because uh, you're going nowhere. And uh, he's where not is equating Caprice that now? with you. He's not. No, no, <laughs> no. February, though, we talk, February, right? February, all right. All right. Anna? Hi. Could we do okay by then? No. I mean, could be. Yes, could be. Then we won't talk. We'll only talk if you're not doing well in February. <laughs> that, that's what I want to say. <laughs> okay. But I'll mark, I'll mark it on my calendar just to be safe. Anna? Hi. You're 23. What's up? Uh, hi. Um, uh, I just want to say hi to Brittany. Uh, hi. Maybe you're uh, a lesbian? Could be. <laughs> oh, yeah. no, I'm not. No, okay. it's no. possible. She's not into I mean, me, I Anna. I, no. I know what you're saying. Definitely he's, he's attracted to men. About her health. Okay. Not into Adam. Okay. <laughs> anyway, my. It's only because I vomited shows? last night. <laughs> I'm into guys. No, yeah, I get that too. I get that a lot. Yeah. I just, I don't know what my problem is. I just. Well, I, I'm willing. I'm willing to concede that after a certain point, it gets weird, and then it. It's like, uh, for me, it's like me buying a lottery ticket. Never bought one. And uh, the first few years of the lottery, I could have bought one. Now it's been 15 years, and I won't buy one, and I have a little streak going, and now it's never going to happen. I know it's not exactly yeah, I, the same. I don't know what I'm missing. It takes so. on a life of its own eventually, though. Yeah. And you get a certain momentum with it, and you don't want to do it yeah. because you but, have a streak. But you know what, though? I it seems like you have a very idealized notion about what, a what relationship love needs is. to be yeah. for you and yeah. that needs to be there before you're going to go yeah have you not found that no i mean i've i definitely haven't i mean i b- before i do i want to be with a person that i think i'm going to be with for the rest of my life and granted you know it happens all the time people meet they think that they they make love and it doesn't work out and that's a possibility too but i've never i don't think i've ever allowed myself to be in a position where I, I want to look at a boyfriend as someone that doesn't fill voids in me, but just enhances everything that I want. And, and I mean, I've changed my idea of what I want in a boyfriend so many times. I mean, I've dated, it changes all the time who, what types of guy I date. And I just, right. I guess I'm just not secure in myself yet or something. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Yeah. So, right. But Anna, I'm not a lesbian. So. Anna, what do you, well, you're at least bi. Anna? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm that though. <laughs> Anna, what do you want? Um, uh, my question is for Dr. Drew. Yeah. Um, a friend of mine uh, told me that um, that snake bite kits were helped a lot in like increasing like nipple size. Nipple size. Very true. Hmm. Is that true? I've yes. never heard of this. Sure. That sounds bizarre to me. You know how that works. Snake, snake, snake bite, bite kit is like a l- razor blade and a epinephrine or something isn't it no, it's a it, razor blade and has a little suction cup on it to suck the venom out oh, that's and nice. you put that on your nipples why how would that ever make it bigger it, it's it like how it's a, like a scar how, i how, guess how, how a, no oh. no like a scar a well you scar. cut you, no, cut, you it, don't, cut it and then irritate it <laughs> listen genius you would probably only use the suction part right. of the snake bite kit. You don't have to use the entire kit. You but like suction the razor would make blade. it get bigger. No. <laughs> You're such a genius. Actually, <laughs> um, the razor blade. It, it, well, that would make it bigger <laughs> if you scarred it up. Well, it would be I, all I, scar. I, all right. So to hold a lighter under your nipples. But yeah. you get some scar <laughs> tissue happening. Uh, I'm, I'm the, ta- listen, the snake bite kit is sort of the equivalent of the penis pump yeah. uh-huh. to the males. Is it all dangerous? Right? Is it harmful anyway? No. Because, you know what, the first time I used it, oh it kind of hurt a little bit, and yeah. then I noticed, like, a little bit of discharge. That's milk. Yeah. No, it's not milk. Oh, well, that's ve- that's venom. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't actually bitten, is what you're saying. What makes you think it's not milk? I'm not pregnant. Yeah, but you, you can, some women can, you can actually stimulate milk discharge well, it, it from was just, stimulation. It was, it was kind oh, of who cares? Listen, what happened no. to those snake bite kits? Those green ones? They don't work. Had a picture of a rattlesnake yeah. on them. Yeah, yeah. You just get them at the uh, Big Five or the sporting yeah. goods store. That was Basic, a pretty cool thing yeah. to have. The deal is now with rattlesnake bites, you get to the emergency room. That's you know what? what? I bites. went on a desert tour when I was in Arizona, 
and apparently, if you get bitten by a rattlesnake there, you don't have to worry about the poison because they dry bite you because there's not enough humidity in the air. And they only, their tour guide said that they only release venom on something that's small enough for them to digest. Well, here... I know. In California, we've got, <laughs> got the real ones. But that's, I would probably still go to the hospital. I but that's you. what my tour guide told There's me. There's not enough humidity in the air? I guess you need moisture to make the venom. And since oh. they're in the desert, it's too hard that, that they save their venom when they can actually digest the food. So if it's something large, yeah. they'll, bite, they'll bite you for protection to scare you, but they don't release venom. Interesting. I yeah. didn't know they had any control over the release. I didn't either. Of it. Basically, yeah. the anti-venom is what you need, and until you get that, you're in trouble. It's, it, yeah, I tell you about sucking the, it out. Oh, no, Dr- it I help. was attacked by a snake at Drew's house. What do you mean? What? Remember, I was leaving your driveway that time, and there's a snake going across a the garter uh, snake oh, yeah. 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 driveway. Yeah. <laughs> garter snake. They tried to attack me in my car. Oh. But there was a, a rattlesnake. Remember, my son came on a rattlesnake. He was at a friend's house up in Altadena, and then the 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 maid went out with a shovel, and chopped its head off. Thing was yeah. about five feet long. That's where I picked the nationality of the maid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, a Guatemalan thing to do. And she did she eat it? Make some uh, make a belt out of it? I ate no, it. she ate it. No, you unacceptable. Know, you you uh, tan the skin and urine. That's what I hear. All right, we're gonna take ourselves a little break. When we come back, we'll speak to uh, Grant, who's seventeen, had sex with a condom. The condom broke. He wants to know if the morning after pill's gonna work. We'll find out after this. Love line. Love line. One eight hundred love one nine one. We'll be right back. This is a story about American heroes. They changed quite a few lives last year. Jorge Vasquez put out fires, but no, he's not a firefighter. Philip Dale discovered several new stars. Oh, he's not an astronomer. And Elaine Capo Bianco. She saved a child from drowning, but she's not a lifeguard. They're teachers, but to the kids they've reached, they're heroes. I'm a teacher. The children are the heroes. We're, we're not just teaching subject matter, we're teaching human beings. I am tough as nails, but they know that I love them. I mean, we've got a legacy that follows behind us forever. Teachers have the power to make an impact on our future. California will need about 250,000 more of them in the next 10 years. Reach for that power. Teach. Call 1-888-CAL-TEACH now. A public service message brought to you by CalTeach, the Ad Council, and this station. Okay, so I'm a teenager, right? And everyone's so quick to judge me. On the outside, I may look like... But on the inside, I'm all... Just because I look like... Doesn't mean I act that way. In fact, I'm actually involved in crime prevention. That sounds more like this. It's really a great way to convince adults that while you may be looking, you're really thinking. Call 1-800-722-TEENS to find out how to make your community a safer place for everyone. Get involved, get the number, and call. 1-800-722-TEENS. A public service message from the Crime Prevention Coalition of America, the U.S. Department of Justice, and the Ad Council. Evening, folks. I'm Vince. And I'm Larry. We're the Crash Test Dummies. We'd like to entertain you with a little song. Only one thing. We can't sing. But we're here with someone who can with a song for the little ones. Ray? Mr. Charles? On the big highway of life, there's only one safe place for kids. Backseat, baby. The front seat's not the place to drop off. Backseat, baby. Put that booties in the backseat now. Backseat, baby. Have extra kids you never meet out. Much is our day job. Backseat, baby. You stay alive even when I drive. You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your kids in the backseat. A message from the Department of Transportation and the Ad Council. Dear Jim, I just wanted to tell you the things I love so much about you. 
Like your pasty white belly and how it fits in those tight shirts that my friends think you shouldn't be wearing. I love how you do that thing where you mash four slices of bread into a massive ball of dough and stuff it in your mouth. That's so adorable. And what about when you tell those same jokes from reruns that you've seen over and over again? They make me laugh every single time. Other guys play sports or go running or do something outside, but not you. You're different. Guys, rest assured you will never in your life meet a girl like this. P.S. I can't wait until we cuddle in front of pro wrestling all day this Saturday. I hear it's a steel cage Texas death match. Get some exercise. Get up. Get out. A public service message brought to you by the Ad Council and the President's Council on Physical Fitness and Sports. Yep, it is Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew over there. Brittany is our guest tonight from Big Brother. Brittany was uh, banished from the house, but uh, that's all right. She'll uh, get another gig somewhere else and uh, come What back if Jamie and comes out Deborah. Wednesday? Hmm? She'll be okay? Um, I hope so. I don't... People haven't said very nice things to me about her, and I don't know if they're... Do you think it's just because they want to knock down the beauty queen thing? I don't think that's it. I, I think uh, I don't uh, think they just want to knock down the beauty queen. I think who's that the beauty queen, Jamie. Jamie. Yeah, she's Miss really? Washington. She's Miss Washington. Yeah. I've mm-hmm. seen the show a few times. I I didn't, uh, with the exception of Brittany, did not notice any uh, beauty queen. <laughs> <on her. laughs> Good uh, save. Any uh, beauty queens on the show is one of my objections to the show. Actually, <laughs> she really did they throw her out yet, or she's still no, in she's there? No, she's still she in. She'll probably come out. No, I, no. I think she'll be she'll be very hurt because I think that. While I was in the house, anyway, she had this perception. I think that she thinks by holding herself back and by saying the appropriate things at the appropriate time and being very PC, I think she thinks she's building this huge fan base. And the opposite's happening. I, I, I was under the impression when I was in the house that when she got out, she thought she's going to have a lot of offers and mm-hmm. she's planning on moving to L.A. and acting. And um, the world hasn't looked at her the way I think she thinks they're looking at her. Mm-hmm. And I think it's going to be a huge... Uh, Slap in the face, for lack of a better word. How and old is she? Oh, 21, I want to say 20. 22. Eating disorder? No. Mm-hmm. I don't think so. And, th- and the thing is, she hasn't mm. done anything uh, bad or wrong or mean. She's just been very closed and, and very surfacy. She doesn't let you get inside. And the public isn't taking that very well. Mm. You know, Brittany, so if we had a relationship, we wouldn't need to have sex. I mean, I'm all right with the just oral just open, stuff. Just open. Uh, That's open. what I'm saying. I'm, you know, we could stick to the oral for a while. Remember, Although that a, sounds tempting. I may be over the whole sex I think thing. I have you know, to I'm a little decline. Bit old. Thanks. Just the oral <laughs> stuff for a while. Do you want a blowjob or do you want a girlfriend? That's yeah. what, what I'm saying is, is, you see, you and I are, are coming from different places. You're not ready for sex. I've do had you my have fill, a girlfriend? Is what I'm saying. No, not right now. Have you ever? Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Many, many girlfriends. Really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I know you are. Uh, I've never been with a woman. Oh, how dare you, <laughs> Anderson. Grant? Yeah. You're uh, 17? Yes. What's up? And this is my, my question is for Dr. Drew about the morning after pill. Right. Oh, and the condom broke, right? Yes. The when? Go! Uh, today. Go. This afternoon. Do not pass go. Get that morning after pill. Run, run, it's fast. About, it's about run actually fast. about 90% effective if you get the pill in the first 24 hours. It's about 80-something in the first 48 and about 70% overall over 72 hours. I went today because it's only about three miles from my house. What is? Uh, Planned Parenthood. Okay. And um, they're closed. Oh, we'll go tomorrow. Yeah. Monday. It's good soon enough. It's it's still quite effective. Can get, <laughs> get another open Sunday. Get around appropriate contraception, too. It's time to... They're all at church or wherever they practice Santeria. I'm not sure if they call that a church. And um, I was wondering about the effects on my girlfriend. It's completely safe. It's so safe, in fact, there's a movement to bring it over the counter. Oh, no, no. Yeah. What if that should happen? You know, it's Imagine so funny. Where I, was, I was at a pharmacy today, and I, and I uh, was buying some folic acid, which I think is a good vitamin to take. as has vascular disease in my family and stuff. And, mm-hmm. and you can get 800 micrograms, you know, 0.8 mil- milligrams mm-hmm. over the counter, but 1,000 micrograms, 1 milligram prescription. Right. But and, you you could and, take two of the eight hundred, could oh, you? Oh yeah. You take a handful. Yeah, whatever you want. But so yeah. I th- I thought this is really bizarre. A pharmacist friend of mine is standing there. I go, well, why is that? And he goes, I don't know. 
Oh, yeah. Like, can you, any explanation? No? No explanation. Well, here's the thing that uh, everyone uh, within the sound of my voice should realize, and you don't when you're younger, but you get a little older, you realize. All the stuff that doesn't make sense where you say, but why, but why, but why? And you think you're, then you stop and some a-hole pipes up and goes, well, they must, they know more than you do. They have their reasons. If you can't figure it out, there isn't a good reason. And it, it's that way with everything. All that crap the government does, it doesn't seem to make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. Just, they just haven't gotten around to changing it. It's some historical anachronism. Or somebody's it. getting rich off it. Yeah. There's yeah. Something, yeah. something going on. I think I mean, a lot of things with yeah. yes. medical. Tons <laughs> I think tons. with pharmaceuticals, and it, a lot of it comes down to packaging and tons money well you know because you're in the industry but mm -hmm. I, I you know i we talk about you know um extra fluoride a uh, toothpaste is a prescription and uh you know certain crab shampoos to get rid of pubic lice or prescription it's a who the hell what that's ridiculous mm -hmm. ridiculous recoculous thank you <laughs> it, it's it, it really is i mean why why not it if something's effective get it out to people and listen uh, I don't know how many people understand this, but like for years, uh, I didn't have insurance, didn't have a doctor in my entire life, really, up until up until semi recently. And prescription drugs and stuff that was unobtainable. I mean, yeah. You wouldn't get it. You yeah. wouldn't use it. Yeah. You wouldn't look. There was no one to talk to. I mean, you could just go down to some clinic in downtown and go down to County USC and sit in line for a day. But you probably wouldn't do that. And if it was just some over-the-counter something or some, some cream or some steroid cream or some whatever to get rid of whatever, no way. You wouldn't do it. And there's probably a large segment of society that does not take advantage of a lot of effective medications just because they don't have the resources and they don't have the pathways yeah. to get to it. They can't, you know, Drew, you always say, listen, call your doctor up, tell him or that. Most of the people in this country can't call their doctor. Right. Up. Yeah, I, I believe you're right. And they don't know his name. And if they did, it'd take a month for them to get hold of the guy or to get they'd have to get in line and they'd speak to someone else, not a doctor. Yeah, you're right. All right. Where were we? Ian. Uh, hi, Adam. You're 23. What's up? That's right. Um, I received anal sex um, about well, it was a week from Friday. He was the recipient of. Sounds like he was like a, received an award or something. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the recipient of a. Yeah, he got the uh, the Brown Starfish Award. Oh, well, yeah. thank you, medallion. Oh, <laughs> oh, I wish my parents weren't here. <laughs> Well, um, it's been over a week, and I'm still in a lot of pain. Oh, yeah. That, all, that's all the God time? punishing you. Um, not all the time, but any time that I have to, like... Defecate. Defecate or, like, contract. Oh. Do you, do you have hemorrhoids? No. How often do you have to contract? You mean, like... Uh, You'd be amazed. Know, like... Yeah. Like contract. You know, hemorrhoid patients complain about this all the time. They, they never realize how many times your rear end moves. Yeah. Oh, yeah I'm yeah. contracting right now. <laughs> I know they were talking about it. I'm like, hmm... Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Whenever Drew, uh, whenever his wife uh, calls, when his wife pages him, there's a strong mm. anal pucker Aww. that goes on. <laughs> when he gets a bill or his wife says she's heading to the mall the next day or she I needs some when money, laugh. there's a lot of pucker. Yeah. But there's a lot of movement down there that yeah. people aren't aware of and oh, they listen, can hurt. You don't, listen, uh, all you got to do, here's how life works crack a few ribs and then realize how often you laugh, how right. often you sneeze, yeah. how often yeah. you hiccup, exactly. how often strangers come up or friends come up, get you in bear hugs and stuff. Yeah. Exactly. It'll be every five seconds. Precisely. And so you, you, cause some anal injury obviously so it could be like a fissure or a tear or hemorrhoid yeah. and get get some anusol cream take warm bath twice a day and if it's not getting better in a couple of days you got to see someone about that in a couple of days yeah anusol what's warm anusol bath. do it's an anti-hemorrhoid cream um also anusol hc if you can get that over the counter no you can only get the crap that doesn't work <laughs> it comes in an anusol tube it's really just a uh, flour <laughs> and water that makes makes a paste it's pancake and, mix and they put a little uh, put, they put a little mentholatum scent in it so <laughs> it, so you do get the placebo effect placebo effect but there's absolutely no effective medication in there for that you need to go to a doctor explain to him you're getting cornholed <laughs> by a guy in a pair of chaps and a handlebar <laughs> mustache, and then you can hobble your gay ass uh, into the pharmacist and explain to him what went on. Unless you, but if you don't want to do that, then you can just suffer in your own shame and pain. That's the way the system is. Who? Right, Who? because if you, yeah, hold on, Ian, if you got hold of the stuff that actually worked on your ass, God knows what you might do with it. Oh, you'd be snorting it, you'd be smoking it, you'd be selling it to school kids. Hey, kids, I got some ass cream here. 
This thing has 10% or, or one-tenth of 1% 1 of the effective ingredient in it. Woo! The candy man. Come on, get in line. Ian? Jesus uh, yeah, Christ. There's, yeah. there's actually blood in my stool. Yeah, yeah. you got to get this checked out. You, you, you've got a fish or a fish or Ian, something. There's all kinds you, of lovely things you can get Are you there. sure you should be gay? It doesn't sound like you have the ass for it. Look, I mean, this was not my first time. It's just never hurt like this before. All right. All right. Was this right. guy big? No, he was just... I think he was inexperienced. He was kind of rough. Oh, mm. yeah, yeah. If I had a nickel for every time <laughs> you about STDs. I had some oh, novice yeah. back there working me. You wonder about STDs, too. Not knowing too. his way yeah. around. You know, some infections. I just, just get it. It, it ought to be checked out. It really should. Okay. All right. Cold, yeah. you, get, you get behind him next time. Give him a little payback. Oh, Adam. Adam. Oh. Um, I wanted to say yeah. I think you're pretty sexy. Yeah. But, um. We oh. should wait till I heal, okay? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Let's wait till you're ready. Okay. And you get behind me, champ. <laughs> oh. I'll throw you the keys. Let you do a little driving. All right? All right. Yeah, All thanks right. for calling. Yeah. All right, Take care of yourself. We'll make one hell of a team, Ian. Ian. Newer condoms, be sure. STDs are a big deal with the yeah. receptive anal intercourse. It's a big deal. Yeah. It's got to be great being in a gay relationship. Yeah. Um, I know your last guy ruined your asshole, but... Uh, We'll give it. We'll rub a little cream on it, and we'll work back into it slowly. All right, all right. We'll take ourselves a little break. You gotta admit the gay lifestyle is funny. It just is funny. Of course, you got a sense of humor. Don't you? Can't be uptight and have a penis in your ass. Uh, I've said it many times. All right, we'll take a break. We'll be back. Hello, this is your radio. radio. Love line. We'll be right back. Remember what college cost in the early 80s? Uh, tuition? Yeah, books, typewriter, room and board. Well, yeah, a bundle. Was it worth it? Well, of course, every penny. And get this, now it's over twice what you paid. Well, yeah, but I don't have to worry about my kids' college bills for another 15 years. <laughs> well, if costs keep hiking up and up, you'll be shelling out more in just one year for each of your children than you spent on yourself for all four years of college. Ouch! So what do I do? You better start saving today with U.S. savings bonds. They're easy to buy and afford and are guaranteed safe. Yeah. And savings bonds earn a treasury-based rate of interest right from the start. Wow. Uh, where do I find them? At most banks. Or ask your employer about the payroll savings plan. But whatever you do, start saving now or you'll be... Rooting for a scholarship? Exactly. <laughs> drink of water. Remember the last time you changed your motor oil? You let it flow down a storm drain. It found its way into our waters. So did that paint you tossed in the garbage, as well as those fertilizers you might have used a few too many of. If you think your actions have no effect on our waters, think again. Thank you, Mommy. You can help preserve our waters, not only for your sake, but for hers. Recycle used motor oil. Dispose of paint and household toxins properly. Practice composting and use lawn and garden products sensibly. It's a small price to pay to preserve our greatest natural resource, and the reasons for doing so can be just as small. Good night, Mommy. Clean water. If we all do a little, we can do a lot. To find out how to help reclaim our waters, call 1-800-504-8484. That's 1-800-504-8484. Brought to you by the Natural Resources Defense Council, the Ad Council, and the EPA. Oh, come on, have a drink. No, thanks. Just one little drink. I don't want to. Chicken, everyone else is. I said no. What a nerd. One little drink won't kill you. You've heard it all before. Be cool, join the crowd, have a drink, even though you're not 21. Let's go, she's no fun. Make the right choice. Don't give in. Underage drinking is dumb and dangerous. Look out! A public service message from the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. And now, 
Vince and Larry, the crash test dummies with a lullaby. Crumple, crumple, little car, when you crash, it's au revoir. If on dumb luck you rely, through the windshield they will fly. Keep your children off the streets, put your kids in safety seats. <laughs> crumple, crumple, little car, don't be dummies like we are. <sighs> Gee, Vince, I'm kind of sleepy now. Okay, Larry, just crash anywhere. You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your kids' safety belts. A message from the Department of Transportation and the Ed Council. McGruff here at the airport with some tips that can help make your traveling safer. Uh, pardon me, sir. Hmm? Hey, hey, aren't you, uh... McGruff the crime dog. <laughs> yeah, I thought I recognized the pause. Uh, where do you keep your wallet? My hip pocket. Well, uh, look over there at that man at the ticket counter. So? The guy behind him in line just bumped him. Yeah? And he could have picked his pocket while the man was talking to the ticket agent. Just like someone could have picked yours while you were looking over there. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Put your wallet in your front pants pocket or your briefcase. Oh, yeah, yeah, really, sure. Another thing. Hold on to that laptop computer all the time. Don't put it down. It's too easy for someone to pick it up when you turn your head. Oh, hey, you know, you're just full of good advice. Uh, thanks, McGrath. You're welcome. Uh, just remember, keep your wallet in a safe place. Never leave your bags or valuables unattended, even for a minute. Mm. Do that and you'll be helping uh, take, take a, a bite, bite out, out of crime. crime. You got it. A public service message from me, McGruff, the U.S. Department of Justice, the Crime Prevention Coalition, and the Ad Council. Dad, can you and a can me and Olivia and you take me to the zoo? Kids need dads when they're babies. Daddy, can I tell you a secret? I think there is a monster under my bed. When they're little, when they're teens, when they're young adults. Dad, all my friends stay out till midnight. But sadly, most kids don't have a dad to rely on. Dad, I met the most amazing person the other day, and I was just wondering, how did you know that Mom was the one? Because most dads spend less than 10 minutes a day with their kids. Dad, should I invest in a CD or a mutual fund? And what do you think? Being a dad is real simple. All it takes is time, and it takes a man to be a dad. Call 1-800-790-DADS for free, helpful information. A message from the National Fatherhood Initiative and the Ad Council. All right. Oh, you know, we forgot to play the uh, Dr. Drew Boogie. Uh. Oh man, we got to play that. Ow! Get down, get down. All right, I'll talk over it. There we go. I want to thank Brittany for coming in here from Big Brother. Thanks for you having can, me. You uh, can not see her on the show coming up this Wednesday <laughs> and uh, this uh, Friday, uh, but you can see uh, Dr. Drew. Hey, I'll be on the show. Oh, you will be. Well, the last show. Oh, will you? I may even. Well. You have to watch the show to see if I'm back on. There undoubtedly will be a re <laughs> some sort of reunion show. Too, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yes. It's going to keep going until February. Yeah. So, thanks, Brittany. Until next time, this is Adam Crowley for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Of course, you got a sense of humor. Don't, you can't be uptight and have a penis in your ass. Uh, this has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.